All right, what is up, PSR Marathon? We are back. Might have caught my run last night of Glitch Softlock Percent. Uh, one of the shorter runs of the marathon, but now we're back with the longest run of the marathon. This is Pokemon Sapphire catch -em all First time seeing this in a marathon, as far as I am aware. Uh, and this is a pretty crazy run. Lots of cool glitches. Lots of crazy RNG manipulations for those rare encounters. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of fun stuff going on. So one thing that we need to do right at the start of the run is actually a trainer ID manip. So I'm going to sort of do a, a quick 3 to one countdown to start the timer, uh, just because we don't have a ton of time um, between to do the manips. But I will do a, a 3 to one countdown kind of in the middle of the manip, uh, if that makes any sense. So we're going to start out with a empty save file, and then I'll, I'll do the countdown uh, once we're there. Okay, so manipulation has already started. And then three, two, one, go. So, yeah, right off the bat, starting out with an RNG manipulation, which is pretty unusual for Gen 3 games, doing a trainer ID manip. That's something you see in Gen 1 a lot. But it's also very important for Ruby and Sapphire specifically. So we're going to wait here and time our clearing of that text box. This should give us one of a few specific trainer IDs. Uh, any of them will work. It's a pretty large window, so there's a pretty low chance that we missed it, but we'll double check just to be sure. Three, four, four, perfect. Three, four, four, nine, three is the one for today. Now, the reason we did all of that is for one Pokemon specifically, which seems like a lot, but it is one very annoying Pokemon to obtain otherwise. And then we also need to be very careful here, make sure that our clock is set early enough. That should be plenty. Uh, the time won't actually change throughout the run, but it needs to be early enough to where a Shoal Cave is in low tide mode. There is a Pokemon that you can only obtain if Shoal Cave is in low, low tide, which is Snorunt. Because there's a ice room kind of in the depths of Shoal Cave that is the only room in the whole game that has Snorunt. So we need to make sure that's open. If I, if I forgot to do that, that would be really awkward. We'd get through the whole run and then actually only have catch them all minus one, which would not be good. But so far we're on track. And as I was mentioning earlier, the reason we did the trainer ID manipulation is for one Pokemon, and that is Feebas. Feebas is notoriously difficult to find. Here we're gonna do standard RNG manipulation for a good Mudkip. two frames late. Uh, similar to softlock percent from last night, we'll take an Audi or hasty. 
I'd be okay with either of those. And that was two frames early. All right, we're calibrating. Not as good as our first try last night, but okay, that was also early. I want to see a female Puchiana and a male Mudkip with 21 HP. Okay, this is <laughs> very unlucky. We're getting uh, lots of earlies and lots of lates. I guess this is payback for yesterday getting such an immediate Mudkip. There we go. Okay. Not the best, but... We made it. Yeah, congrats to Tornite for that previous run as well. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't find too many people that were crazy enough to wake up at 5 in the morning to commentate this with me. So, I hope that my commentary will do the job. But if there's anything that's confusing or anything that I've missed, feel free to let me know. I can try my best to cover it. But I am just one person, so I'm trying my best to decide, you know, what's important and what's not important to cover. And then that right there. It's a neat little RNG manipulation for no encounters on that entire route, which is pretty fun. Uh-oh. Uh, okay. I maybe should have saved. <laughs> this is something I did not save for yesterday either. Uh, if we get crit or miss, we might be in trouble. We do have a backup potion if we really need it. That did a lot of damage. Okay, we're good. <laughs> that was a little scary. We're okay, though. This is the hasty mudkip which is one frame late uh, compared to the standard glitchless mudkip. The naughty mudkip. Which... For those that weren't here yesterday, one thing I mentioned about most glitched runs of this game... Yeah, the 1 HP survival there was a little scary. Uh, and that's made worse because of the hasty mudkip. It has worse defense. But most glitchless runs in this game will only use the Naughty Mudkip, which has very, very good stats. Uh, plus attack nature is very helpful as like perfect special attack, very good speed, all that good stuff. And that's a one frame window that you have to do right at the start of the any run, really, which is pretty brutal. It can be pretty reset heavy if you just can't hit the frame. Uh, but most glitch categories, you can actually viably run both the Naughty Mudkip and the Hasty Mudkip. The Hasty Mudkip is a little more RNG dependent, has some slightly worse fights, but uh, a lucky a lucky run with the Hasty is definitely world record viable, just as much as the Naughty is. Uh, they can both get lucky, they can both get unlucky. The Hasty is probably just slightly less likely to get on a good run, but they're both runnable. And I'll kind of show that off in this run. I do need to heal before this next fight. I'll save as well, just because 
We do have worse defense, so I am slightly concerned about my HP. This Calvin fight is kind of annoying. He does have Growl and it's a speed tie, which can be bad, but that was a pretty decent fight actually. Yeah, that's a great question. One thing I didn't talk about yet is what really is this category? What does it mean to catch them all, quote unquote? And the answer is, yeah, we don't allow trading or anything like that. It's only the Pokemon that you can get on a single copy of the game, which if you allow glitches, which we do, then you can actually get that number up to 180 exactly. Now, without glitches, that's actually not the case. Uh, you can only go up to 178 without glitches on Sapphire, or 177 on Ruby. That difference comes from the fact that there are two Moonstone evolutions, Wigglytuff and Delcaddy. Um, but in Ruby, you can only ever get one Moonstone. Also, with glitches, we don't really need to worry about that. One of the major, major glitches for this run is item duplication, which saves immense amounts of time, because there are a lot of Pokémon that take a lot of levels to evolve. For example, Metagross, Salamence, Flygon, uh, but we can actually duplicate rare candies, which is very, very, very helpful. The glitchless, nobody's done a glitchless run of this yet, but people have done glitchless runs of Emerald catch em all, and it's upwards of, you know, 20 hours or something, I believe, which wouldn't really be marathon friendly. Yeah, so one thing I was talking about at the very start of the run that I, I didn't go fully into detail about is the trainer ID manip. That's why we were manipulating RNG at the in the intro. And the way that Feebas works in this game is actually slightly different than Emerald. So the tiles are determined right at the start of the game, around the same time that your trainer ID is. So what you can do is, by manipulating a certain window of trainer IDs, you can know for sure what tile your Feebas is on. Now that doesn't mean that you can just type in your trainer ID into some program and figure out exactly where it is. This is a RNG manipulation for Wingle. We've seen this before. So yeah, it doesn't mean that because you can get repeat trainer IDs on different frames, but within a certain cluster of frames, you can just look at your trainer ID and know what you got, which makes Feebas very, very easy compared to Emerald, which has some strats to kind of narrow things down, but is nowhere near as free as it is in this run.
saves a lot of time. All right, and so we're already kind of changing up the manipulations here from a usual run. Beautiful. That should be good. Yep. Very nice. We'll nickname this. We need to potion. And then we will save here, just because this fight can be bad. Yep, and that's a slack off minip, which uh, we're showing off quite a few new route changes here that have never really been shown off before. Some improved RNG manipulations to make things easier and save time. Slackoth is only a 5% encounter. So RNG manipulation is pretty important for that mon. We are running a little low on potions here, which is sort of scary. We should be alright though. Yep, uh, since my last run... Oops. Or I shouldn't say oops, that was just unlucky. But my, my current PB and world record is about a 645. And we've made quite a few route changes since then. Kind of not a new main per se, but there's a very important Pokemon that we use for a lot of the run that we've now swapped out with a different Mon. A very cool Hoenn Pokemon, one of my favorite Gen 3 Mons. We'll get a lot of time in the spotlight today. My repel's gonna wear off a little later here, so I need to watch out. Oops. Yeah, it's kind of awkward there. Sometimes um, it'll wear out earlier, so I was a little unconfident in that spinner pass, because I wasn't sure if it was gonna wear out right in the middle of it. Um, when I was doing testing, I didn't really time out where it would actually we're off, but better safe than sorry. Speaking of better safe than sorry, we're saving for this fight because we need Wingle to not get a critical hit here. Because otherwise, well, if he does get a critical hit, or I should say she. Oh. <laughs> Speak of the devil, um, that will give Wingle all that experience from that Geodude, which we do not want that to happen. We need Mudkip to get all the experience to get Water Gun. Very classic Sapphire moment. That can kind of just kill your run. You know, normally, most games, you uh, you get crit by your opponent and you lose the run. Uh, in this game, you can you can be the lucky one and still die. The, yeah, that slack off manip that you saw is another thing that my old route did not do. That's a brand new route improvement. Mm. 
Now, because we're running the hasty mudkip, I'm gonna kind of make the safe play here and fight Tommy. This will give me an extra level for Roxanne, which will make things a lot easier and avoid some of the ranges that the hasty would otherwise have. And it really doesn't lose that much time because you will do more damage to the nose pass as a result. Oh, I haven't been marking my stuff. Sorry about that. Total should update. There we go. Sorry, there's a there's a lot going on in this run, uh, so sometimes it's it's hard to notice all my markings on the tracker. So I'll try my best to keep up with that. Up to three. Thanks everybody for the the good lucks in chat. So with the hasty, which we are currently running, the that geo dude would be a 50-50 to die to a water gun, which is not very good. That's why we fought the extra trainer, make it guaranteed. But the hasty really isn't too bad. You can see at level 13, it does about as much damage as you would expect from like a normal fight. It's really at level 12, you notice a difference. That was a very nice crit. Speed things up. And we actually don't really want torrent for after this fight. Uh, it doesn't exactly help with much. Very nice. We were still faster because um, the Hasty, I believe, at level 13 is actually speed tied with Nose Pass. So normally Nose Pass likes to rock Tomb as soon as possible because its AI wants you to be slower. So we'll use Rock Tomb to drop your speed normally. But when you're speed tied, that's not always the case because it doesn't actually know if you're faster than it or not. So that actually sort of worked out favorably for us. Which is kind of funny. Now another thing I haven't mentioned is we need to be very cognizant of our step count. Uh, and that's not just a catch em all thing, that's a any percent thing as well. This run will also show off quite a few new any percent strats that have not been shown. Uh, in a marathon. We got unlucky here. We can't do a backup here because we need to make sure our step count is pristine. So we just have to wait for him to spin. And we're actually grabbing this X special which is a change from the old any percent route. Uh, you might have remembered if you were here last year, the opening run was Sapphire any percent, any percent glitched because we kind of just found these glitches like a month or so before the marathon. And the route was pretty good back then but we've made actually some new discoveries since then that allow more interesting strats to develop. So you might, yeah, if you remember that run, you know that the original route went to level 100. We did a tricky RNG manipulation for Zigzagoon to pick up a rare candy to get that candy as early as possible. I guess I should have repelled in the cave. Oh. Risked a tile there for no reason. That's okay. Oh, I had it. That is a kind of an emerald movement that you do there, but I do not run emeralds, so I'm always a little uh, concerned that I'm going to mess that run-to-walk manipulation up. 
But anyways, so the original any percent route used a tentacruel and then used the used one glitch to access a level 35 tentacruel early or tentacool and then it evolves. Um, and then rare candied that to level 100. Now level 100 is actually very fast in this game because it skips all the experience text text boxes and animations, which is very, very good. Um, I had a lot of people ask back in that route, you know, why don't you just go to like level 80 or 90? Sure, like surely that time save of using less candies is worth it. And that wasn't really the case because the skipping all those text boxes saved quite a bit of time. Uh, but we actually found a new tile corruption that allows us to no to not do level 100 strats anymore. Uh, the new route is a little bit faster than level 100 strats. It's a little riskier. Actually, it's a lot riskier. Um, but it kind of makes it more exciting. Uh, and this has been known about for you know, several months now, but it's not something that has been shown on the PSR Marathon. Yeah, Maria probably knows the one we're referring to. Um, because, yeah, in the in the NA% community, it's relatively standard now. It's kind of common knowledge. Um, but this was not really known about at the time of last PSRM. So the route actually caught Tentacool in Slateport. And without this new without this new method of getting Tentacool, um, level 100 route was still the best. Um, due to some complicated stuff with RNG and needing to do a candy manipulation, for example. All that good stuff. Um, the lower level route wasn't super viable. But now it is. Now it's around... I think we estimate about 30 seconds faster than the level 100 route, um, and it's significantly less boring because, for one, you spend much less time duplicating candies, rare candies, which is nice. Uh, and you also just have some more variance in, you know, oh, like, how's this fight gonna go? Am I gonna hit this range? Uh, not everything is just a straight up one hit KO anymore. So the new route is definitely a lot more interesting. It's more difficult. You could argue it's actually easier in terms of execution. So the tentacool manip is harder, and it's a pretty cool manip, which we'll see in uh, five minutes or so, give or take. Yeah, anyone that's run any percent kind of knows that the the tentacool manip is pretty punishing if you don't get it first try. It's a very long manip, so needing to retry it costs quite a bit of time. And it's also very, very precise, which is why I've been keeping track of my step count in my head this whole time. Uh, step count needs to roll over in very specific places for this to work. And another discovery that actually made this run viable, or this route viable, 
for no longer doing level 100 strats. It has to do with methods. So for those that aren't aware, I'll try to keep it simple because it's a little complicated how methods work, but there are different encounter methods that you can get in this game. There's one, two, and four are the most common ones. Generally one and four are what you'll see for wild encounters. And there's a whole lot of math and science and stuff that goes into how it actually determines which encounter you get or which method you get. Need to be careful not to sell a thief. Uh, why do I have extra money? That's fine. This. Give a mail to Mudkip. This might look similar to what we saw yesterday in Softlock Percent. Pretty much the same glitch setup. And then I need to be careful here. I'm gonna save. Or not yet, actually. I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Being ultra careful, my step count. But that should be correct. And then we're gonna save just to make sure that we don't die, because if you mess up this fight, the run is kind of dead. This is. Really the only opportunity you have to set up the glitch in a reasonable amount of time. We did one-shot the low tad there, which is good. Um, that's not always guaranteed. And then we have to Thief on Mudkip, very important. And that's the glitch. The glitch is now activated. We now have a lot of crazy stuff that we can do with that. We won't be soft locking ourselves this time, though. Uh, we'll be doing something else. And so, this is a pretty, pretty cool RNG manipulation here, followed by a pretty cool glitch at the end. So, keep your eyes peeled for that. I'm going to try to focus here because this manip is tough. This manip requires a two-frame window at the end. It's pretty tricky. All right, we got the first part. We need to make sure that our movement is very precise throughout all of this. Good so far. We're actually setting our teleport point during an RNG manipulation, which is pretty cool. Alright, and now here comes the glitch and the two frame window. First try. Let's go. Here's our girl, our queen. Hopefully I didn't mess up the YOLO ball. Awesome. That's a very satisfying minute to hit first try. So you can see <laughs> This is the glitch. We are on the water, and that one tile very conveniently lets us set that up. And 
and the RNG manips kind of keep on going. We need another rare encounter. You might guess what it is if it's on Route 102. Should be first try. Beautiful. I'm gonna make sure... Beautiful. Okay, we have 53 special attack. That is perfect. Oops, and then teleport. So that's what I was talking about with methods. There's method 1 and method 4. I believe... I could have these mixed up. I believe it's method 4 that we want, but it might be method 1. Regardless, one of them has two spell special attack, so the difference in methods is the second half of the IVs. So the special attack, the special defense, and the speed will be different for different methods. The most common method for... there's math that goes into it, but for this specific tentacle, the most common method by far is a method with two special attack IVs. Not good at all. It is a modest nature, so it's still okay, but it really isn't strong enough to justify a lower level uh, compared to level 100. This, however, there is a method that has 27 IV special attack. And for a while, we thought it's not possible to get this method on this route using this glitch. Uh, but I'll give a shout out to Keeping It Icy. He, sort of by luck, managed to have an incorrect step count trying out that manip and actually managed to get the good method by accident. And so we were able to reverse engineer that uh, from the VOD of him getting that. And we actually managed to find a two frame window for a uh, good method tentacle. It's level 35, which is the highest level you can get on tentacle. It ranges from like five to 35 has very solid stats. It's got 27 IVs in attack, 27 IVs in special attack. It's modest. Um, mild or rash would probably be better, but um, we're pretty limited in our options just because we already want something that's maximum level or at least close to it. We need it to be tentacool specifically. And that, are, that already narrows our options down a lot, just because finding a level 35 is pretty rare in the first place. So this is pretty much the best you can get. The other thing that's pretty cool is you notice we saved and started that manip all the way at that double battle. That's because this tentacle is on frame 45,000, or not 45,000, that'd be crazy, 4,500, which takes over a minute to actually get to and wait, if you're just waiting based on number of frames at 60 frames per second. Um, it takes over a minute. So we need to start the manip early in order to avoid just standing there and wasting time for a whole minute. That would be very inefficient, but... That's one of the reasons why you need such precise step count. Is because you're running so much during that manip, you need your step counts to... So when I say step count rolls over, every 128 steps, the game will call RNG to check did your Pokemon gain happiness or not, or gain friendship, whatever you want to call it. So based on the number of Pokemon in your party, when you hit that step count, the RNG value will change. And so you need that to change in predictable spots. You need it to change the same way every time. So that's why I was keeping track of my step count there. 
At this point, step count is much less important. Um, it'll still matter for certain things, but it's not really humanly viable to keep track of it after that first section of the game. Oh, and I forgot to mark Ralts as well. We should be up to six now. So I mentioned all of that. None of that really talked about the glitch, uh, which you could see we literally walked on the water of Route 103. You might call it the Jesus glitch. Um, but that is kind of the new glitch that allowed this lower level route, this riskier route to actually be faster. The main reason for that is normal tile corruption. So what you saw yesterday, if you were here for soft lock percent, the tile corruption with the mail glitch where you fill in words in the mail needs basically needs five Pokemon in your party. We're also getting a Pokeblock case here. This is important for uh, the Safari Zone. You need to get the Pokeblock case to enter the Safari Zone. Um, but also for Pokeblocks, as the name implies. And we will be using Pokeblocks later on in the run, which will be fun. Do a little pause minute set up there. But this new glitch that we found, this new tile corruption, all it requires is you removing that piece of mail from that Abra. So in that little menu we did on Route 103 where we removed the mail, that whole thing is what caused that tile corruption. And the position of that tile is actually predetermined. It just so happens that it perfectly lines up on Route 103 to corrupt that one tile that lets us get onto the water. If it was a tile more to the left, or maybe two tiles, I don't remember exactly the position. But uh, yeah, if it was too far up or down or in a different direction, it would not work. Um, so it's very, very lucky that that happened to work out the way it did. We kind of steamroll our rival there, kind of talked over that, but fights are pretty easy at this point. Uh, they won't be forever. Uh, Watson is not free by any means. Getting this great ball here for some catches later. But Brawly and Rival 2 are so much easier than Glitchless, which is very cathartic if you also run Glitchless runs of this game, because uh, Brawly and Rival 2 can be major pains. They will kill your runs with crits and mud shot misses constantly, uh, but Tentacool, it's no problem for our queen. But back on that tile corruption glitch, the reason why that one is so much better than the normal tile corruptions, because one thing you could do is just spawn a tile of water on that route instead of, you know, needing to actually run on the, the natural water. And that is true. However, that standard tile corruption that I'm talking about that needs five Pokemon in your party. So we can actually skip an entire catch using... Uh, oops, I forgot to get this. Um, we need this glitched mail. Oops. It's in our mailbox. It's got a funny name. And it shows up as an item instead of a mail.
but being able to skip a catch saves significant amounts of time. <laughs> Catching one thing costs like 30 seconds, so uh, it's a pretty big deal. All right, and this is a benefit of the new route. The new route developments is early day carrying. We originally didn't have Slackoth and Roths at the start of the game in older routes, but they're actually pretty convenient to have early because for one, you need to catch something anyways. You need to have enough Pokemon in your party to do the glitch properly. You don't need five for the tentacle minute, but you do need five for glitches in the future. So it's worth it to just get it earlier on in the game instead of later. And then Ralts was kind of a natural next step because we have two slots in the daycare. You really want to put things in the daycare that are low level just because they'll get more level ups over the course of the run. And Slack Off and Unlucky Detect there. There's some things even over leveling can't beat and that is <laughs> double detect. That second one had a 50-50 chance of failing. So we're going to be a little low on bubble beams, but that's okay. We'll pick up the maxi thing. But yeah, there are, there are a few low-level Pokemon that we really want to put in the daycare as early as possible. And two of those are Slack Off and Ralts. So we get those early, they'll be significantly higher level by the time we make another trip back to the daycare. And that is something that is brand new to this route, so I'm not entirely sure how much time it saves, but it does save quite a few candies. It saves 19 or 20 candies overall, which is a pretty significant amount. Uh, Duplicating a single candy takes about four seconds, and then using one takes another three or four seconds. So, you know, you can do the math, but seven or eight times 20 uh, is at least a couple minutes. So it's pretty good to get things in the daycare as early as possible. And here's our Tentacruel. The XP routing works out really nicely in this route. You evolve right before Watson which is very, very convenient because Watson is sort of the first difficult fight for Tenta. When I say difficult, like I'm kind of, it's all relative, right? Tenta Cruel is still very, very solid compared to glitchless strats, uh, even though Marsh Dump does very well. but. Pentacruel doesn't have to worry about Mudshot misses. The annoying part of this fight, though, is the Magneton, which will not die to a Bubble Beam. And that's why we picked up this X Special earlier. There's actually only one X Special you can get on the ground. Um, otherwise, you'd have to do a detour all the way to Verdant Turf, so it's pretty convenient that it's there. And we got Sonic Boom from the Voltorb, which is very nice. So Voltorb can use Spark, Sonic Boom, or Self-Destruct. Spark is the worst case, although it's pretty common because Spark has a 30% paralysis chance. Really, this run has a lot of 30% paralysis chances uh, with Spark, and there are a lot of body slams that you have to deal with. Um, so that's kind of the scariest part of the run, is you don't want to get chained into body slam paralysis or spark paralysis over and over. But 
Right there we did a run to bike manipulation, which okay, that wasn't very good. I was kind of distracted. Running two tiles away from certain spinning NPCs and then quickly getting on the bike and biking past them is a safe way to pass trainers in this game. Now one thing that would have been nice on Watson would have been self-destruct from Voltorb. This is a 13 and 16 range, which we hit. Beautiful. That can be bad if you miss it. It'll usually go for Stun Spore, which is slow. And uses up a Paralyze Heal. But if we did get Self-Destruct from Voltorb, for one, it is fast because, you know, it destroys itself while you set up your X special. So it kind of saves a turn in that regard. And you also don't have to use a bubble beam. So it saves a PP of bubble beam. Yeah, for any uh, new joiners, this is catch them all. So the goal is to catch every single possible Pokemon on a single copy of Pokemon Sapphire. And without trading, uh, in Sapphire, the most you can get is 180. Now, normally I would have a full-on tracker instead of just a counter. Kind of a complicated menu here. Teaching Dig to Mudkip. This is important for later. Um, but because we need it for later, it lets us skip escape ropes. We don't really need escape ropes because we'll just have Dig on our Mudkip. That lady tried to see us, but we were too fast. We did our proper movement. There's another run to bike. It's a pretty difficult one, but we got it. But what I was saying is normally we have a full-on tracker that shows every Pokemon that we need to catch throughout the run and, you know, tracks if we've caught them or if we're going to evolve into them, all that stuff. Oh, I need to mark Tentacruel as well, so we're up to seven. But we don't actually have room on screen for that, unfortunately. 180 Pokemon uh, would take up quite a lot of, of stream space. Uh, so instead, we've just got that counter on my webcam. But that does the job. And it also keeps things a surprise for later. There's another clean run to bike. And now we're heading up to Archie. We're heading up to Mount Chimney. They're doing something something weird with the volcano. And we gotta stop them. This fight would be kind of slow and annoying with Marsh Dom. But we're in luck. We've got our our beast of a tentacruel, and it's gonna kind of steamroll. 
Uh, Archie 1 is actually not free. There's a 13 and 16 range that we want to hit on Golbat. And then Sharpedo is actually not a one-shot either. It's a two-shot. Yeah, the two Mons that we don't have in our party right now are Ralts and Slackoth. We deposited them in the daycare uh, before Watson. So we won't take them out until post-game, but they're just going to be accumulating XP basically in the daycare until we take them back out, and then we'll swap in a couple other low-level Mons. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're on their honeymoon. They're uh, having a good time, hopefully. And here's Archie, kind of the main bad guy of the run. If you haven't seen the Hoenn story before. He wants to increase the amount of water in the world. He wants to increase the size of the oceans. And here is the first real example of our ability which is Clear Body. Clear Body is a very, very, very good ability. It is so good. It basically removes any stat drops that your opponent can do. All right, this is a 13 and 16 range. Very nice. That's about an 81% chance to kill. And then if we get a crit here, that would be nice. But otherwise it's just a two shot usually uses focus energy. So yeah, clear body of prevents any stat drops from your opponents, including abilities like Intimidate. And there are a lot of Intimidate users in this game. Uh, this Team Aqua has a lot of Mighty Yenas. The, the admins, like the kind of the the right hand people, like the, the second in commands, they both have Mighty Yenas, and Archie as well has Mighty Yenna every time. And so, even if it wouldn't matter for your attack, because, you know, a lot of the time we're using special moves, but not always, it does actually matter for that Sharpedo. That Sharpedo would not be a two-shot if you were at minus one attack. You'd have to Bubble Beam, which would be slow, because it's not very effective. Um, but regardless of that, it still saves time. It still saves a little bit just to not have that Intimidate animation go off. Um, but it is also just genuinely helpful to not get your attack lowered. And then there's a super useful case for it uh, towards the not the end of the run, but towards the end of the main game. Okay, this run or this fight is sort of scary. Um, but later in the game on Drake, Shelgon has Rock Tomb, and it will just spam it keep because it wants to drop your speed to be faster than you. Um, but it'll actually just keep spamming it, and Clear Body actually avoids secondary effects stat drops as well. So Rock Tomb can never drop your speed, which is very, very good. It would be pretty annoying to have to set up like a guard spec uh, and then, you know, set up and then go through the fight that way. So it saves at least a couple turns that way. All right, we're going to go for the risky strat here. This is a 50-50 range. And we got it. All right, I'll take that crit any day. That's very good. Thanks for the good luck, Mockwing. One of the best glitchless runners right there. So yeah, that's a 50-50 to kill. Uh, that's a strat that you can't do with the weaker tentacle. Yeah, 
The safer strat would be you weaken it with acid and then you bubble beam. However, that's, you know, slower and it then risks a body slam. It'll basically always go for body slam because you're the same gender, so it won't use attract. Uh, and then if you get paralyzed by body slam, you're actually still faster, which is pretty surprising. Uh, the good tentacool, at least, is faster if you get paralyzed. Oops, I kind of messed that up, but it still worked. We That's a uh, shout outs to Emerald Runners. That's the Emerald movement there. <laughs> Oh, I did forget to grab the nugget, but that's okay. We should be okay on money. Enjoy the desert music for a little bit. Yeah, what I was talking about with paralysis. Paralysis actually thing. Paralysis cuts your HP or your not your HP, your speed by a three quarters in this game. Okay, we're fine on money. but you're actually still faster than the Torkoal. Even at one quarter of your normal speed. All right, and there's our Whismer. So we just unlocked Nest Balls. Yeah, Torkoal is very, very slow. But regardless, paralysis can still be bad, you know, if you get fully paralyzed and stuff like that. Oh, nest balls. Sorry. There's a there's a lot in this run. There's a lot of routing that went into this. So there's a lot to talk about. Unfortunately, like I said earlier, nobody was really crazy enough to wake up at 5 a.m. with me, except all of you wonderful people in the chat. Shout outs to all the viewers. But I'll try my best to cover everything that needs to be covered. But nest balls work better on lower level Pokemon. Alright, we're going to revive our root fossil here. And here's our little leap. Going to nickname it A. We nickname some things and not others. Uh, mostly just based on how many rare candies they're going to need to evolve. But nest balls are pretty useful for lower level mons. We're going to X Ether. going to give our final mail. And now we're doing one of the hugest glitches for this category, item duplication. This is used not just for rare candies, but for 
a ton of things. It's used for, spoiler alert, Master Balls later in the game. It's used for Moonstones. That way we don't have to find a Lunatone that's holding a Moonstone and take its item. Uh, it's used to duplicate Water Stones as well. We need Water Stones for... Right? Am I remembering that right? I believe it's Water Stones. Uh, we need one for... Starmie and one for... Uh, I'm blanking. I'm looking at my tracker. <laughs> I'm missing. Uh, what's the last mon that evolves with Waterstone? Ludicolo. There you go. Thank you, <laughs> Aiden. That was... L oh, sorry about that. The tracker might have gone away for a second. That was left as an exercise to the reader. Or the viewer. So yeah, we'll dupe some stones, moonstone and water stone for Ludicolo and uh, Staryu, or Starmie, and then Wigglytuff and Delcaddy are the moonstone users. We will also dupe berries. Uh, not too many, just a few. But we'll be doing not a, not too much of this, but there will be a lot of duplication throughout the run. Just because we need so many candies to evolve these beefy mons like Beldum. Oh, I need to mark Lilip as well. I believe we should be at nine encounters. Uh, but what I'll do during these sections is I'll kind of just be mashing and I'll be talking about things as well if you're interested. Um, but I'll kind of give a heads up when these sections are starting. They generally take around five to seven minutes, give or take. Kind of depends on how good my mashing is and stuff like that. But around six or seven minutes to be on the safe side. Um, so I'll kind of announce when that's happening going forward. There will be a few other sections where we do this. Um, and that's just a good chance for any of you watching to get some water, you know, take care of yourself, go to the bathroom, um, get some food, stretch a little bit, because obviously this is a <laughs> this is a long run, so make sure you're staying healthy, staying hydrated, all that good stuff. And then um, it's yeah, it's also a decent time for ads if if we have a ad break that needs to be taken care of. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'll kind of just yap away about the run. Three minutes of ads, perfect. So anyone that doesn't have ads, I'll kind of just talk a little bit about how these glitches are working. The main catalyst for this glitch was the double battle that we did kind of at the start of the run, about half an hour into the run, where we used Thief on um, Mudkip. Mudkip was holding a mail. We used Thief on it. We stole that mail from Mudkip. <clears throat> and it's a pretty kind of... Uh, blanking on the word, inconspicuous, I guess. You wouldn't think it's like a, oh, like that breaks the game. Uh, but it actually does because the game does, has a whole system for handling mail. And generally when you remove a mail, it goes through a process of, it keeps, tracks of how many, keeps track of how many slots are full. You have six slots for your party. Uh, which are the relevant ones for the glitch. So, 0 through 5. Now, normally, the game would just fill up all those slots, and then <clears throat> you wouldn't actually be able to fill up anymore, because you can only have 6 Pokémon in your party.
but when we do what we just did with um, removing the mail with thief, the game actually skips over that process. The game does not properly clear the slot of mail. So let's say Mudkip's slot was slot three. Um, that slot stays marked as full. And then you can equip another mail to that Pokemon. Then you have slot 4 is also marked as full. So you have slot 3 and slot 4 filled up by a single Pokemon. Alright, welcome back from the ad break. You all had a good break. Um, quick, quick summary. I kind of did a long-winded explanation of glitches there. But, yes, and also as Goddess Maria said, this was originally thought to be Japanese exclusive. Um, I discovered that a lot of things work the same on English that we didn't actually know um, until recently. Some things are slightly different, but a lot of the core core parts of it work the same. But quick summary of what I just said during that ad break is mail has slots in this game. So there are six slots for your party, which are the important slots. I'll have a nice little evolution here. There are six slots, zero through five. And then um, by thiefing mail during a double battle, the game does not properly clear the current slot. So if Mudkip had slot 2, we thief the mail, it's still mark, uh, slot 2 is still marked as full. So then you can then equip another mail, because Marsh or Mudkip no longer has the mail, and then you're filling slot 3. So on one Pokemon, you're filling two slots of mail. That means you can fill all six slots of mail and still have a Pokemon in your party that does not um, have a mail. And that breaks things because it doesn't know what slot to give that next mail. You try to equip another mail and it doesn't know what to do. So it actually defaults to 255. And there weren't really fail safes for that, but the way that it works is it just looks at the slot number and goes to a certain spot in memory based on that slot number. And it'll just keep going for slot 7, 8, 9, even though they don't exist, it'll just keep moving down in the list of memory values. So when you do slot 255, it jumps way, way down in memory to places where um, are obviously not intended. And then each mail slot stores some data. So it stores like the words that you put in, it stores some information about what Pokemon it is, what the trainer ID is, stuff like that. And so when we fill in a message, we're no longer writing data to that you know normal slot, we're writing data to that other place in memory way down further in memory. And that just so happens to be tile data in this game. And that lets us corrupt tiles. And that's actually how that single tile corruption worked to get our tentacool. Is we removed that glitched mail from Abra. That was actually a 255 mail. Oh my god, I thought he was turned. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot to bagman up him. I thought he turned already. Okay, well that's one optional for the run. But this is actually not a terrible optional because we are a little low on money. And he gives us a lot of money. I don't know why I didn't <laughs> bagman up him in the first place. I had several minutes to do that. But that's okay. The money is useful. But 
but yeah, when we removed that mail from the Abra way back at the start of the run, that was actually a slot 255 mail. So we removed it, and the game said, oh, you are removing this mail. The item ID is now zero. Because we're unequipping a mail, and so that data, it needs to know what item ID is actually stored on the Pokemon. For whatever reason, it stores that even for the Pokemon mail, which doesn't make a ton of sense, but it is what it is. But when you remove that mail, it gets sent to the mailbox, and so now the item ID on that slot is now zero, because that mail is no longer on the Pokemon. And so that corrupts that single tile, sets the value to zero. Oh, I forgot to do something important. I forgot to, <laughs> I forgot to candy the tentacle, um, the tentacle. Okay, well, I think we're gonna save a candy here because we'll level up. Yeah, I did the <laughs> the catch them all candies and then didn't do the uh, tentacle candies. Sorry about that. This one's pretty short, though. But after all that explanation, we still didn't really talk about how item duplication works. The way this works is a similar concept where all of our mail slots are full and then we try to equip another one. And when you try to do that, things just kind of break because the game really doesn't know what to do. Because it looks through slots zero through five, it says, okay, all of these are full. I can't do anything. Um, but when you do that and the Pokemon is holding an item, you try to swap the items. What it actually does is kind of a flow chart of add one of the current item to the bag. So in this case, we add a rare candy to the bag. And then what would normally happen is remove that item from the Pokemon and then equip a mail. However, when all of our slots are full like this, what actually happens is the game tries to equip the mail first before removing the item. But it fails because all of the slots are full. It says, I can't equip this mail. So instead, it gives us back one of our current item, being a rare candy. Okay. Sorry for the mistake. There's a lot of candying and menuing to do in that single menu, and I tend to always forget at least one thing. But anyways, gives us back that rare candy, but never actually removes it. So we're getting that plus one, but never actually taking it off of our Pokemon in the first place. So it'll just stay there forever. And basically acts as a duplication machine. It's very, very powerful. You can duplicate any item that you can equip to your Pokemon. Unfortunately, you can't equip things like key items to try to do weird stuff with that but you can actually equip Pokeballs, which is super, super convenient. Because we'll get Master Balls later, and we will dupe some of those. It makes catching much, much faster. There are a lot of things that would not be guaranteed or even good chances to catch, but Master Balls makes it free. All right, first Hydro Pump of the run here. Beautiful. Yeah. We call this route, we call this new route the Hydro Pump Tenta route. Obviously, the level 100 route was so powerful that you didn't really need Hydro Pump for anything. You know, it's got low GP and um, it's inaccurate, so why would you really use it over anything else? 
But in this lower level route, it's actually pretty important. Because you need that extra power. Oh, and there was a question earlier about why you don't duplicate candies earlier to make that Torkoal better or make the other fights better. Uh, you actually just can't get any rare candies earlier unless you do some big detours. So one candy you could get is back in Granite Cave, but you'd have to go all the way through Granite Cave again just to get that single candy. And we don't exactly have a good opportunity to go back there because we've already fought Brawly. Gonna remove these mails real quick. Oh, Trick House as well. Yeah, good point, Maria. Um, that's a strat that is sometimes done in glitched manipulous runs. Nice run to bike there. But that is a good question. That was like kind of a key consideration of this new route is where do we actually get the rare candy? Because there aren't a ton that are available super early that don't require significant detours. Repel word out, wore out a little earlier there because I got the backup full heal. Bing, bing, bing. So you might have seen me remove mail from Wingle and Wismer earlier. You have to do that because you can't deposit a Pokemon into the PC if you're holding mail, actually. Which is inconvenient. It's it's slow. You gotta do it a lot. And it adds a lot of routing difficulty. You gotta kinda make sure that your party is set up in a way to where you're not gonna need to be constantly depositing things and withdrawing things because that's already slow on its own and it adds even more time having to unequip a mail and re-equip a mail every time you want to do a duplication glitch or a tile corruption glitch. So it definitely makes routing challenging. Um, so that is kind of what fueled us to make this route change which you'll see pretty soon here, actually, the the new sort of featured Mon. Um, the kind of the crux of that is roll compression. Roll compression is very important in this run because you want party space as much as possible. You don't want to be depositing things a lot. You want to avoid depositing as much as possible. And the Mon we catch pretty soon will be a very good example of that. As a little hint, I'll see if, if anyone can guess it in the chat. Some people might have already seen it, but we deposited Wingle for a reason. We will not be needing Wingle for Fly. And there's our cast form. Very important that you catch, or that you receive that. There's no other way to catch it in this game.
And then Maria mentioned another thing, pickup. Pickup is an ability that after a battle has a random chance of picking up a random item from a selection of items. And what the old route, the level 100 route, used to do is catch a couple zigzagoons and actually do an RNG manipulation to pick up a rare candy. That would let you get a high level earlier. However, we did actually look into that with this lower level route, and it's just not really viable because you do have to catch an extra Pokemon in the first place to even do it. So instead we just get kind of the earliest one that's not too far out of the way, which is the desert candy. All right, and here's a big manip here. Oops. This is the, the big new route change. So you can't catch every single Pokemon in the in the Hoenn Pokedex. There are version exclusives like C Dot that you can't get. Uh, I messed it up. This might be a step count issue. This manip is pretty short, but if we're unlucky, the step count could still be bad. Yeah, I'm gonna try resaving. Most likely a step count thing. So this manip is pretty easy. This is just an unfortunate thing where you can't really know exactly what your step count is at this point in the game. It's too difficult. Ah, uh, okay. I'm gonna try again. <laughs> if I don't get it this time, I'll uh, do a sort of a backup. Okay, we'll do the backup here. Let's see what this is. I believe we are barely on the late side. Let's try this. So, yeah, we catch a total of 180 Pokemon. Pretty close. But not every Pokemon that exists. There we go. My offset was just a little bad. And here's... Our girl got the speed drop. And that is a little spoiler of why we need this Tropius. So, yeah, that was some dumb time lost there. I think that was just an issue with my flow timer. Uh, sweet scent is very, very important. So Tropius is great for this category because, again, of how much roll compression it has. Because the we don't really want any useless mons just taking up space. I This might be the only mon that learns Fly and Sweet Scent, yeah. Um, I can't think of any others off the top of my head. This is the only convenient one. That manip is normally a five frame window, so it's usually pretty easy, but it's a little off my game. Um, but it also learns Rock Smash and Strength, so it really just does everything you could ask it to do. Here's our Kecleon. It's just a convenient time to catch it. We do need to weaken it, which is a little annoying, but... That way we're not having to go out of our way to find another Kecleon later. What Sweet Scent does is generates an encounter. So when you use Sweet Scent standing in a section of grass, uh, the game will 
always spawn an encounter after a set amount of time. And that's really useful because, for one, I've talked about step count a little bit already, but if you don't know your step count, then things can be difficult to manip. Oops, I need to fly. Fly in slot two. You can see Tropius learns pretty much all the HMs that we need him to. It's really convenient. Or her, I guess. We go over there just to do our set our uh, fly point so now we can fly to Lily Cove later. So Step count might actually be bad here. Um, but step count is normally kept track of in this game for friendship or happiness. And after a certain amount of steps, the game will uh, give each Pokemon, I believe, a 50% chance of gaining happiness. And that messes with RNG when that happens. So if that happens in the middle of an RNG manipulation, then things are going to be off and you're not going to know it. This manip is tricky. <laughs> um, we'll see what we get here, because my step count might be bad. Okay, that's not what we want. That is potentially two frames late. Try again. So this is for a Pikachu. We need Pikachu now because we need to get a Pichu as soon as possible, or at least a Pichu egg. Uh, giraffe rig is... Okay, I believe our step count is off, which is my fault because I messed up. I messed with the step count for Tropius. It's sort of annoying. Step count will be less relevant after this minute. Yeah, that was sort of just me kind of panicking and thinking that my step count was bad when I believe it was fine in the first place. This manip is pretty tricky because not only do we need a Pikachu, we need a female Pikachu because that's the only way we can get a Pichu. There are no dittos in this game. We're swapping Sweet Scent to the slot one here, just because we have time to do so. Okay. Nice. There's our female Pikachu. Third try is not too bad, honestly, considering I believe it was our step count that was bad. Ooh, okay. This is a 41% chance per ball, so it's not guaranteed. Very nice. Second ball. We hatched three eggs throughout the run, 
And that's another reason why Tropius is so, so good for this route, or for this category, is it frees up so much space in your party for eggs. And then here we're doing a interesting little thing. But we hatched three eggs. We hatched Pichu, Azuril, and Iglybuff. Alright. So we're going to do a little glitch here. So you, if you blinked, you might have missed it, but we spawned a secret base tile using our mail glitch, our question mark mail. And we entered and exited that secret base. Might not seem like much. That's a surprise tool that'll help us later. Oops, messed up my steps there. So yeah, that Pikachu minip is pretty annoying. It's pretty long if you miss it. And it's um, a two frame window because it needs to be a female Pikachu. It would be a three frame window, but the first frame is a male Pikachu, which isn't really useful. And now we get to go through Mount Pyre. You don't see this very often in a Sapphire run, so it's nice to get, get to explore the world. There's a lot of spinners that we have to bag minip, but you can do some pause minip setups sometimes. This lady is a rotator, so we can just walk past her. Yeah, I love the Mount Pyre music. There's some there's so much good music that you get to hear in this run that you don't really get to hear in like an any percent run or a glitchless run. So all of that, that whole detour was just for the sea incense, which is for one Pokemon. Which is Azuril. I think that might have been a safe pass, but I'll bag my it to be safe. So, Azuril, the only way you can get Azuril in this game is to breed a Meryl or an Azumarill. However, it needs more than that. It also needs to be hold the Meryl or the Azumarill needs to be a female one and it needs to be holding a sea incense. So we do need that. It's just kind of funny that you got to go all the way through Mount Pyre just to get it. Yeah, I wasn't entirely confident on how that pause minip worked, so I'll just take the safety. <laughs> Would have liked to have a run with no optionals, like Winston. Out of all the optionals to hit, that one's pretty fast. Yeah, there are currently no trainer skips um, in any percent or in catch em all. I mean, they mostly fight the same trainers required trainers. There is one extra required trainer in catch -em all um, Not to spoil too much Ananan, but I do have a, a little announcement at the end of this run related to that. What are some of the mods that have interesting ways of obtaining? Um...
That's a good question. Feebass is a good one. So, the way that Feebass works in the Hoenn games is there are randomly generated tiles of water on the the routes that can have Feebass. I think it's like Route 119 and 118. Oops, I don't need to go there. It's autopiloting. In Emerald, it's kind of hard to manipulate that tile to be like exactly where you want it. You kind of ha you can narrow it down, but you can't know exactly what tile it's. <laughs> yeah, I was doing glitchless muscle memory there. Um, in Ruby and Sapphire, on the other hand, you can. So we actually did a manipulation at the very start of the run that manipulated both our trainer ID and our Feebass tile. The trainer ID lets us figure out exactly what our Feebass tile is. But we have to know that exact tile, or else it's going to be a huge pain to find Feebass. And then Milotic, by extension, is also pretty interesting. So after you get Feebass, you need to get your Feebass to have a certain amount of beauty to actually evolve. It needs a certain amount of beauty, and then you rare candy it, or level it up in some way, and it'll evolve to Milotic. We actually have a pretty good way of doing that in this run. Because of item duplication, we can get a berry that gives a lot of beauty when it's made into a Pokeblock. And then we, however, you can usually only get one of that berry, but you can duplicate that berry and then make four Pokeblocks with that berry and they're very, very strong. How does the trainer ID relate to which tile the Feebass will spawn on? So the game sort of generates it at the, kind of at the start of the game, like right after you finish the intro where Professor Birch talks to you. And they're not directly related, but a lot of that stuff sort of happens around the same time. So the trainer ID will be generated after um, after the cutscene, and then a couple frames later, the Feebass tiles will be generated as well. So they're not directly linked. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I don't think you can just type in your trainer ID and find your tiles. Although I believe there are programs that you can do that and it'll narrow it down at the very least. Um, but I could be wrong on that. People can correct me if they know more about it, but... Um, because we know around the same time or we know about the time that we're pressing continue, we can look at the cluster of trainer IDs that are available and narrow it down based on that. And that allows us to actually know the specific tile. Yeah, so... In glitched categories, Tenta, Tentacruel is the fastest Pokemon to use. It's the highest level Pokemon you can get uh, early on in the game. Level 35. And Water Poison is also just pretty solid. Yeah, hits a lot of stuff. We're going to stock up on our mail for the rest of the run. It's two. It's three. It's 
four. It's five. It's six. Or five and a half. That should be enough. We're gonna need a lot. Yep, without RNG manipulation, it's pretty hard to get Tenacruel because it can range from. Let me confirm that before I say that, actually. Um, yep, level 5 to 35. So if you're not using RNG manipulation, it's like, you know, you might get stuck with a level 5 or a level 10 tentacle, and that is not going to cut it. You might have seen we picked up the Soothe Bell there in Slateport. That is for one Mon in particular. Uh, oh, where's my... Oh, yeah. thought I had it right the first time, which I did. But I'll let you all try to figure out which Pokemon needs the Soothe Bell. There's only one in this game that needs friendship to evolve. Reorder this sort of. You can see we can equip Master Balls. And now we're doing what we did with rare candies, but now it's Master Balls. So every time we do this, we're getting another Master Ball. It is not Skitty, no. Yep, so now we're doing Master Ball duping. This is very, very useful. Some things are just really hard to catch. I mean, the legendaries, obviously. You'd have to do an RNG manipulation or something like that, or just get really lucky. Uh, but this is significantly faster. It takes like three or four seconds for a Master Ball. So this is even faster than... Even if you could weaken a Pokemon in one turn and then catch it afterwards, that takes more than four seconds. Yep, Maquin got it, the bat. Crobat is the only Mon you can get in this game that evolves with happiness. So the Soothe Bell is important for that, speeds up that process. And really, uh, Crobat is kind of a pain to get. We really go out of our way to make sure that we're getting happiness as much as possible. So we'll also get a Luxury Ball, which helps. Yep, you don't have to deal with weakening, you know, if you accidentally like crit something and then it dies and you gotta find it again. Yeah, and it's it's just faster in general. You could, in theory, make RNG manipulations for like every single catch, and then that way you could not use Master Balls for a lot of things. Um, but in actuality, it's probably still going to be slower. Um, generally, you have to wait a, a few seconds at least to find a favorable cluster that will catch the Pokemon. Yeah, it would it would be a major 
pain takes so much time, and then, we're, yeah, you're probably saving one or two seconds per Pokemon at most. Um, that's like best case. Um, on average, it's probably about the same or slower, and then, God forbid, you miss a ball, and then you're losing like 20 seconds for no reason. So, Master Balls are pretty, pretty worth it. Yeah, one of the other early high-level Pokémon you can get with glitches is Wingle and Pelipper. We did actually do a good amount of routing into Pelipper. It's another high-level Water-type Mon, learns Surf, gets strong moves. Uh, but it's barely slower than Tentacruel. Its main weakness is that it does not have strong water type moves early on except for hydro pump and you'd have to use a bunch of rare candies to get hydro pump you only really have water gun beforehand and that's only if you start out with wingle pelipper does not have water gun naturally so you'd have to like one big benefit of pelipper would be skipping the evolution for any percent at least but you can't really do that because water gun is pretty important how many Master Balls do we get slash need? Uh, we're almost done. We get about 80. 80 is generally enough for the whole run. So we're at about... Uh, if I can do math. We're at about 60, so only about 20 more. Fun. And the next Pokemon we catch is actually standing right next to us. Actually, that's the case in-game and in real life. Uh, it doesn't show up very much on the webcam, but got a Billy. Oops, I just took him off my mic on accident. Oh no, time loss. But he needs to have his spot. Any Billy Enjoyers in the chat? Yeah, he's a little camera shy, so he's uh, he's hiding underneath the the mic. I would love to see a shiny Pokemon on this run. A shiny Electrode would be really cool too. I have not seen a shiny in Catch 'em All as of yet. Uh, we'll do one more and then we should be good. No shiny today. I'm gonna have TID for shiny. Next marathon, maybe. Yeah, no shiny Ralts either. Believe it or not, that is not the last that we'll see of Electrode. It will come back towards the end of the run. In kind of the first iterations of this run, I my first run ever was like a nine hour or something, like a nine and a half hour run. Initially, we actually duped like way way more master balls we duped like over a hundred because i kind of just assumed that nothing would be like guaranteed catch at full hp 
but that's actually not the case. There's a lot of things that you can catch with other Pokeballs that are actually guaranteed catches, even at full health. So we saw Whismur earlier. Uh, we caught with Whismur with a net nest ball, sorry. It's kind of confusing. There are net balls and nest balls in this game. There's clear body saving time again. Nest balls work better on lower level Pokemon. And Whismur in Rust Earth Tunnel is always low enough level that it'll be guaranteed. And you can buy nest balls in Verdant Turf on the way, so it's very convenient. We use about 12 nest balls throughout the run, so that's, you know, 12 master balls that we don't have to spend time duplicating. And then the same goes for net balls, sort of, except net balls work better on water and bug Pokemon. So there are a few mons that are guaranteed with net balls. Uh, like Wurmple. I believe Ninkata as well. Uh, but we get about 11 or 12 net balls too. Alright, perfect. We are in low tide. <laughs> that is very important. Run would kind of be dead if it wasn't. Uh, so I'm glad I set the clock correctly. God dang it. That movement is so hard. I've only done that movement perfectly once. That room with all the ladders and tight turns. It's really difficult. <laughs> we don't want a Zubat yet. We want a Sfeel. That's awesome. That's an okay level. Could have been worse. Oops, I should have nicknamed that. That's a slight time loss, but it's only like a second. We love Sfeel. It's okay. Uh, oh shoot, sorry, uh, missing things, there we go. This will be a RNG manipulation for Snorunt. It's kind of uncommon here, I think it's like 15% or something, so it's worth it. It's not a super easy manip, it's like a two frame window or something. Might have been early on that. Yeah. I believe I was like a frame early. Zubats, that is. Uh, let me see what that is. Pretty email. Yeah, that's two frames late. Okay, so that seems to be the trend today. Is we're like two frames late on things. Um, sometimes that just happens. Some days you'll be earlier on things. Some days you'll be later. It's, just, it's weird, but that's what it is. I'll try my best to kind of preemptively adjust for that. And that is one frame early. Okay, so <laughs> over-adjusted. Maybe we don't need to adjust as much as I thought. Come on. That is one frame early again. I guess I didn't need to adjust at all. 
They're just unlucky. There are a few one frame minutes, yes. Those are the worst ones. Those are very annoying. And I'll definitely shout those out when I get to them. There we go. Okay. More no 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 no. Not the best, but we got there eventually. More no 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 no. This is where dig comes in handy. Uh, I just use like standard flow timer settings generally. Like five, five beeps, 500 interval. It did take a lot of time to find the offsets for all of these <laughs> RNG minips though. Yeah, for those that aren't super aware, RNG is advances usually one time per second. And so, or one time per frame, sorry. So if you press A on a certain frame for sweet scent, you will get an encounter based on that frame. So based on when you pressed A. Oh, I didn't get dive yet. Okay. Uh, remind me to get that after this fight. I'll remind myself. And so... Generally, we... Yeah, we look for... Clusters of frames that will give you... The encounter that you want. That way you're not trying to hit a one frame trick at 60 frames per second. Yeah, well, I wish it was one time per second. It'd be really easy. How many of these minips are optimized already? They're mostly optimized for just low wait time. The annoying part is generally there's not good clusters for like high level. Um, how it usually works is like one of the frames will be max level, one of the frames will be slightly lower level, one of the frames will be kind of in between. So there's kind of a little bit of luck there on like which frame do you hit. Um, Bagon has been optimized for max level because that one is very important. Um, it ranges from like 25 to 35 or something. So that's a big one. That one you will always be level 35. Um, I think that's the main one that's like super optimized for level. All the others, you kind of just hope that you hit the good frame. So yeah, we're going to do rare candy duplication here. Get about a stack of candies. I like to call 99 a stack because it's how many you can have of an item. So this will take about five minutes. Uh, take a break if you want. Go get some water. Get some food, go to the bathroom. I'll be here when you get back, and then we'll fight Tate and Liza. Tate and Liza is kind of one of the core aspects of this new route. Or, like, how we kind of determined, like, one kind of obvious question is why did you? decide to go to level 64. That's the level that we rare candy to before Norman. And that's kind of the thing that is the hardest, because when you have so many options, I mean, you have literally anything from level 35 to level 100, and it's like, what level do I actually go to? One of the key things we wanted to do with this route is a one-turn Tate and Liza. Uh, being a double battle, any extra turns are going to be extra slow. 
So we want to minimize that as much as possible. So level 64 get lets us hit level 65 by this point in the game. You get just enough experience. And at level 65, you have a 13 and 16 chance to one-shot the Lunatone. And you'll always one-shot the uh, Soul Rock with Surf. You want to you wanna kill both things on the same turn with Surf, is kind of the goal. And that's not easy, because in double battles, any moves that hit both opponents are the damage is cut in half for each opponent, so it's not like as strong as you would think. So despite them being, you know, weak to surf and us having a very strong surf, you still need a pretty high level. Um, and Lunatone is pretty bulky too. The other thing that this level lets us do is we barely get level 65 for Winona's Altaria. We actually get it right after the Swellow. And level 65 is the point where Acid is a guaranteed two-shot. Which is pretty good. Otherwise, it's not a great range, and you don't want to miss it. So, the candy route, the, the experience route works out pretty well. What's the candy for? The candy will be for a lot of things. Yep, mostly evolving Pokemon. At this point, we'll use a couple extra rare candies on... Tentacruel. Uh, after we catch Kyogre. But that's about it. Everything else will be for evolution. So like Beldum, you can only get Beldum at level 5. But it evolves at like 45. <laughs> yeah, 45. So that's 40 rare candies just for one Pokemon. It's pretty significant. I'm like doing this without glitches would be. Kinda crazy. You'd <laughs> you'd have to spend a lot of time, uh, you know, using an XP share or something, leveling up on the Elite Four, I guess. That's another thing that we've experimented with a little bit is. Um, we could actually duplicate XP shares and then give like our whole team XP shares and then they just get experience along the way. But we haven't really found a good use for it yet. The daycare kind of does the job for us. But there could be improvements in the future. This is a long run and a complicated run, so there's always new ideas that we can implement. Okay, and we're almost done with this stack of candies. In terms of pace, this run is not bad, I would say. Uh, but we did lose a good chunk of time on Tropius, Pikachu, and Snorunt, which was unfortunate. But hopefully we're getting warmed up. Hopefully our RNG manips for the rest of the run will be better now as a result. And we specifically have Abra in slot 2 here. That's important. Uh, this is a good opportunity to get a bunch of XP on something that needs it. And then uh, 
Hopefully we hit this range. Oh shoot, I meant to use Thief. Oh well. Didn't matter, we hit the range. Very nice. Solrock will always die. And that's really as fast as you could possibly do Tate and Liza. So <laughs> it's it works out very well. And then this gives Abra a lot of levels. It'll hit level 14. And so then you only need two rare candies and it'll evolve. So that saves a lot of time right there on its own. Yeah, double kill. Two for one. What is the max number of Pokemon in Sapphire in one save? If you allow glitches, it's 180. If you don't allow glitches, it's 178. So... There will be a pretty cool glitch that we do towards the end of the run. Oh yeah, we need dive. I almost forgot. Oh wait, I already got dive. No. I kind of gaslit myself into thinking we skipped it for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh well. And then the other type of ball I didn't talk about was the dive ball. We're gonna need some more max repels later, so we'll make a stop back here at some point. Ah. Alright, and then we get the Super Rod, which is actually the only rod that we need. And then we get the Sunstone. And then we'll be up on a Super Bell. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. Forgot. Don't do this yet. Go down to Duford. These are some route changes that we made recently, so I'm still getting used to the differences. Sometimes my muscle memory gets the better of me. Okay, this section is kind of scary for optionals. That guy can be really annoying. Same with that guy. But we made it. Get to actually do a full tour of abandoned ship here, which is pretty fun. We do actually get the storage key, which is kind of rare. The bike is barely too slow to outrun this tuber. If you try to go up the left side, she'll see you, which is unfortunate. What are the two extra mons you can only get through glitches? It's a little complicated, so I'll I won't spoil it yet. Uh, but you can check out my my world record run if you want, uh, if you want a spoiler. Oops, and I need to teach dive because I forgot. Dive, right. Yeah, abandoned ship is really cool. It was one of my favorite places as a kid. For sure. Bum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. I was reading my notes. Went past it. Yep, Ice Beam is 
not used in any percent. Wait, no. I'm doing the order wrong. A little too much of a detour, although it is very useful, but not really fast enough to be used uh, to be used in any percent. And our <laughs> our box is actually, or our bag is full. It's a bit of a problem. So yeah, bag space is actually a genuine concern in this run, which is kind of funny. But it is actually kind of required for catch them all, and you'll see why. It's oh my god, it's related to how we get those extra two catches. This movement's kind of hard. I'll try to focus a little more on it. There's our pokeball. And you can actually dig out of abandoned ship. But yeah, I mentioned dive ball. It's one of the other types of pokeballs we use other than master balls. And that is better at catching things that are underwater, which is really only useful for one thing. And the, I believe that's Chinchow. Um, is not guaranteed with a nest with a net ball, but it is guaranteed with a dive ball. Dive balls are actually slightly better at catching water Pokemon underwater compared to net balls. I might have been early on this. This is a tricky manip. Okay, this worked. It was actually one frame late. We'll see if we get it. This is a fishing manip. No, we got Whalmer. That is one frame late. So, so at least we're close. Yeah, we're about one or two frames late, it seems like, on a lot of fights or on a lot of manips here. Another round, boy. There we go. So we manip both the using the rod. That determines the number of bytes. And then we time that text box. That determines the encounter. And we got Whalmer again. That is one frame early. Okay, so we're a little all over the place. This is a three frame window. So that was kind of unfortunate. These minips are tricky. They're just finicky sometimes. I don't know why. And that is one frame early again. We'll adjust our, our timer a little bit. Try again. The fishing ones especially feel like they're they're always a little different from day to day. That was one frame early, I think. Or one or two frames early. Yeah, these are brutal. But we'll get there. There we go. Okay. It's like fourth try. Could have been better. Fishing manips are tricky because the RNG actually advances based on 
how many bytes you get, <laughs> which complicates things. So we had to find a, a group of frames that gets at least approximately the same amount of bytes to make things more consistent. And we don't go in that one, we go in this one. We should have actually... Well, we couldn't catch the Whalemer later. But we could have caught the Whalemer there as well, if we wanted to. Oh my gosh, I keep forgetting. Okay, we gotta clear out some stuff here. Uh, <laughs> not any of this stuff. Uh, we'll get rid of the potion. Yep. Uh, but we need one more spot of room, actually. This is kind of tricky. We really don't have spots. <laughs> we really don't have space for what we want. Uh, we can get rid of these. That is something the new route sort of struggles with, and if you're not playing as safe as I am, it's not as much of a problem. Because you wouldn't pick up extra backup items. But the bag space is still pretty pretty tight. And our repel wears off perfectly there, which is pretty cool. Okay, that's a good start. 22 is pretty low level. I'm gonna search for a better one. Okay, getting encounters here is pretty uncommon. Um, I'll probably start using Sweet Scent soon. This is Netball. So I might regret not catching that Chinchu now. Because I believe it's only 30%. But we'll see. Yeah, it's 30%. But it can range from level 20 to level 30. And we want it to be like level 29 at least. Um, would be optimal. Yo, Ekman. Thanks for the good luck. And... Yeah, we really just want to find a high-ish level one, even if it's not maximum level. We want it to be close enough that it'll evolve into Lantern without too much trouble. And there's 30% here, so we'll search for a little bit. If we find a Relicanth, that's great. Okay, that one's slightly better. We'll take it. And that's our one dive ball of the run. Now we're going to save, do another manipulation. So you can see, like, not every catch is RNG manipulated in this game, or in this run. Uh, even though it's a very strong tool. Uh, some things are just worth to take the risk. This is a two-frame window for Relicanth, so not free. We'll see what happens. And that is one frame late. Try again. Ah, uh, it might be late again if I had to guess. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. So 
So two frame window, you know, is like 35 milliseconds. It's not easy. What are we hitting here? Hitting... Where is it? Twenty-one. Okay, we're actually pretty late on this one. We're like one frame and two frames late. Okay. That is one frame late again. Yeah, we're just a little late on every minute. It definitely feels like every run where every time I do a run of this game, my offsets need to be adjusted by like a frame or two. It's very weird. But again, it's a two frame window, so it's not free. There we go. Relicanth, very important. To open up the Reggie Caves, which is exciting. It'll be important for the post game. Okay, we're going to Max Repel. Each Sludge Bomb. Sludge Bomb is a pretty strong poison type move. Pretty good for our Penta. And then we're gonna take our Water Stone. Get rid of this. We're gonna make one Water Stone. There we go. Gosh, my movement is very bad this morning. Lack of sleep is probably contributing to that. We're going to trade our red shard and our yellow shard for Firestone and uh, Thunderstone. Both important. And then I go down. There's a cool glitch that we could do here. Um, unfortunately, it is slower in this section, but we will use it in the post game. So keep an eye out for that. Oops, I did not mean to do that. I was looking at my notes. OK, I need to be careful here. Because there is a this lady that is very easy to hit. Made it. I've hit her on like half of my runs. <laughs> it's really an arc. Okay. This is one of our first big one frame windows. This is for Waylord. I felt early. We might get Pelipper, which would be just as good. No. Okay, yeah, I think we're early. Beautiful. Second try is great for a one frame. I will definitely take that.
It's pretty cool to see Waylord in the overworld, actually. This is the only place in the game you can catch a Waylord. Okay, and then we go back, being careful again. And then so we save again. And we try to catch Pelipper. This is a two frame window. That might have been a little late. Yeah, Wailord is humongous. Nice. First try. Uh, Master Plan. You can get Waylord without an evolution. Uh, um, yeah, I see what you're saying, I think. But yeah, you can just evolve Whalmer. But Whalmer won't always be very high level. Sometimes you'll need to use a lot of rare candies to evolve it. So it's nice to just have it immediately. And then... We're gonna have a little fishing section here. We love a good fishing mini game. Okay, we're getting kind of unlucky. But yeah, Whale Lord, Whale Lord can be caught on Route 129 specifically. Okay, this is really unlucky. I'd like to get a bite. There we go. We want Love Disc here, and Corsola would be great as well. There's our Love Disc. Yeah, the first few minutes were kind of rough, but then second try Whale Lord and first try Pelipper is definitely making up for it. That is very good. First try Love Disc is pretty good too. And now we need to do another minip for Corsola. This is another fishing minip, so it's difficult, but hopefully we'll hit it. Our trackers me uh, matching up. 26 in the Pokédex. Good. This is a three frame window. No, that is one frame early. Okay. Dude, it's unfortunate. One frame off. But pretty close at least. There we go. Nice. I'll take second try. Not bad. Would have liked first try, obviously, but second try is pretty solid. We are not post game yet. The we made a lot of route changes to do things earlier um, before post game. The old post game or the old route used to only maybe have like thirty catches. Uh. Post game, or going into post game, we now are closer to like 45 catches for post game. So there's a lot more that you do in the early game with this new route. It kind of spreads things out a little nicer. Yeah, there might be some audio desync. I know uh, Tech has been having some issues with that.
Well, it's light outside for me now. I'm enjoying the dawn. Woke up when it was still dark, started running when it was still dark, and now we're here. And we're not even halfway done. We still got so much more content. Let's go. So, Sludge Bomb is just a really good move. Here's Clear Body coming in clutch again. Uh, it's It's got good base power. It has Poison Chance, which isn't super relevant, but... Can make a difference. We actually even used Sludge Bomb in the old level 100 route. Um, just because it was actually, like, useful. There were some things that Acid wouldn't kill even at level 100 that Sludge Bomb did. But it's it's really good. Very useful for the Elite Four. Very useful for Wallace. Really just a lot of the water types that you run into. That's kind of, like, the main thing that resists water in this run is water itself. And so poison hits it neutrally, which is good. Uh, you know, it's not super effective, so it's not as strong as you'd like it to be. But it doesn't have any extra text boxes, which is a big deal. Because you'll see here that you could just use Surf to kill a lot of these water types. Sharpedo will die to this Surf. But you get that extra text box. And a crit. We did actually use Surf there just because our Sludge Bomb count is sort of tight until the... well, it is tight for the rest of the game, basically. So we need to be kind of careful for how many we use. We save one here, but then we use it later, so evens out to be about the same. So... If you're trying to keep up with the story, Archie, and he's the leader of Team Aqua, he found this red orb. That was kind of his mission, to find the red orb, because he thought that that would let him control Kyogre, which is the legendary Pokemon in this game. It's the... kind of controls the, the seas and controls the water. It's an orb. And he brought this red orb to Kyogre's hibernating place. It had been dormant for some time. Uh, do I... What's this? It had been dormant for a while, and he brought it there, and then... I don't know why he thought the red orb would work on the blue Pokemon, but he did. <laughs> uh, and it made Kyogre really mad. And now Kyogre is causing this huge rainstorm that's going to flood the world if we don't stop it. And you saw Maxi from Team Magma, who's kind of the voice of reason in this game. That's pretty clean movement. Maxi's like, what the heck are you doing? We're telling you not to do this all along. And yeah, now we gotta go clean up his mistakes, clean up his mess. In Ruby, it's basically the inverse. Maxi from Team Magma takes the blue orb 
to wake up Groudon, which then makes it super hot and sunny, and there's a drought. I forgot to repel. And then we have to go stop Groudon. Oops. Uh, Sapphire is slightly faster for both any percent and catch them all. Don't have to do any RNG manipulations, any uh, tricky RNG manips for Kyogre. If you run glitchless, you know the pain. Uh, we just catch them. We got Master Balls. Very important we don't run away from this. I don't believe you can re-encounter Kyogre in Sapphire. I believe that's only a Emerald thing. Got him. First try. <laughs> and then we use... Oh, we actually... Our XP routing got messed up a little bit because I forgot to candy earlier. Um, so we use three candies here. Normally you would only need to use two rare candies. You like barely hit level 66. But it's fine. We've got plenty. All right, and we do a little bit of fishing. You know, we just save the world. We get to reward ourselves a little bit. It's a nice, nice day of fishing before we go get our eighth gem badge. This is for Magikarp. It's just a good place to find it. If we get a Gyarados, it's 20%. That'd be nice, too. Um, usually catching things is faster than evolving them, so you can just do that. That's kind of the optimal way to do it. And then this is all. Um, but it's not really worth, like, staying around for it. It's not worth getting another encounter. We just catch it if we get lucky. Do the ice puzzle here. I'll try not to mess it up. Let's go. Uh, the reason we use the couple extra candies there we do that in any percent as well. For one, it makes Wallace a lot better. Uh, the Milotic is kind of a pain. And then Sludge Bomb, Surf to Slot 1. Uh, but this gives us a 15 and 16 range on the Milotic, so it's pretty favorable with these extra candies. We need to hope to not get Body Slam paralyzed here. That'd be very bad. Very nice. We only got a few more Body Slam... Body Slam chances throughout the run. We're almost in the clear. 
And now Sludge Bomb basically just sweeps, yeah, unless we miss this 15 and 16 range. But the reason why we don't use these candies earlier to, like, make other things better is because after we duplicate the rare candies, our Tentacruel is still holding a rare candy, and so you'd have to take the extra time to actually go into the Pokemon menu, remove the item, and that would just be, like, extra, basically extra menuing when you don't really need it. Um, so it ends up being faster to just use them at the end here. You also get some extra experience, so... Um, it works out better. Alright, we're headed to Victory Road now. We're almost in the post-game. Which, post-game is where things get really crazy. You know, we've used a couple uh, glitches here. Okay, perfect. I need to buy more repels... ...soon. I maybe should have done it there, but it's okay. Money routing is actually kind of difficult. Um, Pokeballs are kind of, like the special Pokeballs are kind of expensive. They're a thousand dollars each. It's the reason behind keeping regular repels. There are some sections where you'll be, like you um, route 105. Wait, no, route 115, sorry. All right, am I, tr yeah. Route 115. To get there, you need to go through like a short section of water, and you don't want to get the water encounters there, because we already have all of our water encounters. So we just do a small repel, and then that'll wear off by the time we actually get to the grass on Route 115. So it's usually, yeah, small sections of water or grass that we don't actually want any encounters from. Alright, here we're catching things. We don't actually want Golbat. We're gonna catch a Zubat later. And that'll turn into a Golbat. Unlucky. These are 30-ish percent for... Or 35 percent for Golbat. Alright, this part right here is very important. This is a two-frame Rock Smash. Manip. Rock Smash is a tricky Manip because you can't really tell if you're early or late because you just won't get an encounter. So it takes a lot of calibrating. We have like five seconds of downtime. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. First try is awesome. And you can catch Geodude in other places, to be fair, but it's definitely worth it doing this Manip, because this Geodude is very high level. And so now it only needs one candy to evolve into uh, Graveler instead of like, it'd be like 20 candies if you caught it in Granite Cave. We're getting pretty unlucky with wild encounters here though. We have like a 65% chance for something useful and we've gotten four gold bats in a row which are not useful. Is that a giant mudkip? He's a pretty big mudkip. His name is A. He has a rain hat on. It sits on my microphone. 
this perspective kind of makes him look huge. He's not like the size of my room. He's just like the size of like a big plushie. But yeah, there's kind of a perspective trick unintentionally. He's a big mudkip, yeah. Okay, five gold bats in a row is kind of crazy. That's five thirty-five percent in a row. Six? Okay. Kind of unlucky. So, um, you can kind of see now that Tropius is very important based on how many sweet scent manips we've been doing. The sweet center we used to use before Tropius was Illumise. Oops, I need to fish as well. Forgot about that. Oh, and we also want a small repel for this section. Because all you really get is Zubats and Golbats. You can actually get fishing encounters, even if you have a repel active. That's why I used it already doesn't change the odds or anything. That is good. That is almost max level, which is great. We want it to be uh, anything level 29 or higher is perfect because it evolves into Whiskash at level 30. Hopefully get an encounter. Okay, <laughs> that was kind of crazy. Uh, pretty much anything except you would be useful. I cannot believe how many of these we've seen in a row. There we go. Very nice. That's something that we no longer have to RNG manip. That saves time. And level 42 is good. You can get either level 42 or level 40 um, from the Manip. And 42 saves a candy. So I believe Agron evolves at level 42. And we still have a 50-50 for something useful. That is not it. <laughs> we can get Hariyama, Magitite, or Medicham here. Any of those would be good. Okay, dude. That is kind of crazy luck. Three fifteen percents in a row. And we'll use my rule of thumb is that we'll usually search manually until we have less than a thirty percent chance for something useful. The reasoning for that is, if it's thirty percent, you are you are you have more than a 50% chance, so you're favored to get something useful. That's not bad. 
That's actually really good. We might just not need to manip anything here, which is very cool. But when you have a 30% chance, you're favored to find something useful in two tries. And you doing a manip and sweet scenting is slower than two normal encounters. So that's kind of my risk reward analysis um, for this route. You know, you could play riskier, you could play safer. It's sort of up to you. Which is kind of the nice part. You can decide if you're, like, tired of it or not. Great. Okay. That's all we need. We catch this, and we are out of here. We do have to do something in the last room after Wally. How do we get so many Master Balls? Uh, there is a glitch in Ruby and Sapphire that lets you duplicate any held item. So that includes things like rare candies, Master Balls, anything that you can equip to your Pokémon. You can even do, yeah, you can duplicate things like, like evolution stones, like a moonstone or a water stone. There is a duplication glitch in emerald as well, although it works differently. Nice thing about the Altarias in this run is that even if they dragon dance, you still outspeed them. And that's the case for uh, Winona, too. Yep, and we'll have exactly enough sludge bombs. We need the last one for Roselia. We got the funny number for our level for a little while. Coming up here. This is a three frame window for Loudred. Beautiful. First try is very good. A weird quirk about these games, when you save and reset the game, the game does not actually save the position of your cursor in the bag. So it'll just go back up to the, the top. And so that's why we put things like the Master Balls and the Super uh, 
Yeah, super rod at the top. Okay, we got a male cast farm that's actually useful for later. And then... All right, and now we're gonna do a quick evolution section before we go into the Elite Four. Actually, want to deposit you as well. Oops, not you. I want to deposit the Tentacruel because this will full heal him. And we want Sveal. Yes, Sveal. Snorunt. Staryu. Chinchu. And Magikarp. We'll lose a little bit of time because I accidentally did not nickname Sfeel. You can see every time its name shows up, we're losing uh, five frames. It takes about one second to nickname something. So if you use a lot of candies on something, it's worth it. It's not always the case, though. Some things, yeah, that only need like one candy, it's not worth it. Alright, opening up my uh, next section of Flow Timer. <laughs> so, Flow Timer is the name of a metronome program that helps me time my inputs when I'm doing those RNG manipulations. And I originally had every single manipulation, like every single offset in a single file and it like took up the entire screen. I actually had to put it on like a vertical monitor because it wouldn't fit. Now we have it divided into three separate, uh, three separate files, so it's a little more organized. There's still quite a lot though. And our little ball is all grown up into a Waylord. I hope he enjoyed his time in the sun. Going back into the PC after this. Oh, did I say Waylord? Sorry. I meant Walrein, yes. There's a lot of Pokemon, okay? It's, it's easy to get them mixed up. And I'm running on like four hours of sleep here. Walrein, yeah. New infinite fusion Pokemon just dropped. Man, these Pokemon evolve pretty late. It's pretty surprising. Like, clearly at level 42, I believe. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, four more hours on the run. I'm hoping we can be underestimate in this run. I think like a, a 630 or a 645 would be good. Uh, my current world record is a 644. We had a good early game, more or less, 
Uh, the Mudkip Manep was kind of bad. I should have nicknamed this too. Oh, well. Um, but Pentacle was first try, Slack Off was first try, Ralts was first try, so those were all good. Um, yeah, we just ran into some issues with Tropius and Pikachu and Snorunt. Um, star you a little bit. Other than that, things have been going pretty well. I should have used a rare candy there. Fire red leaf green runners, look away. You might get PTSD. Gen 1 runners in general, I guess. Just have a couple more evolutions now. Uh, Barboach. Uh, do we do Geodude now? No, we don't do Geodude yet because we'll be making a guest appearance later. Oh, and then we also need uh, Tropius. We need you back. Uh, we're not going to have room for everybody. Yeah, we'll have to do one more. These are all pretty quick evolutions. And then we're going to the E4 after these three. One of my favorite parts of the run is getting to hear all the cool Pokemon cries and see all the cool sprites. There's a lot of mods you normally wouldn't see in a run, like Exploud. Agron's one of my favorites too. Here's Whiskash. Shoutouts to keeping it icy. Yeah, so we're at 45 catches. That's pretty much exactly as planned. Uh, depending on what you find in certain areas, you can be higher or lower. But generally around 45 is the estimate. We're going to need Relicanth and Wailord. True Gen 3 fans will know why. led with the wrong thing. Alright, the Elite Four is not free. The Elite Four is arguably the scariest part of the run. At least after, like, the early game. Oh, 
Oh, I didn't evolve Pikachu, actually. That's the one thing I forgot to evolve. But it doesn't really matter because we're getting it later. We'll be, yeah, we have to take it out later for breeding, so. It doesn't really matter if you do it now or later. Could have evolved it, but it wouldn't really save any time. Okay, in any percent, I would definitely save here. <laughs> Phoebe is very, very scary. But we do have backup Pokemon, so we should be fine even if we get unlucky. So this first Dusclops only dies to Hydro Pump at this level. And if you miss, it will usually use Curse, which will just eat away your health in a few turns. So you really can't afford to miss. Nice. Awesome. That's like the scariest part of the run right there. If you miss, your run is probably dead. Luckily, we get a turn now. The Sableye isn't really a problem. We get to X special, and then everything else will just die to Surf. Alright, say goodbye to the funny level. This Dusclops is even bulkier, so it wouldn't even die to a Hydro Pump at plus zero. We need a plus one Surf. Luckily, plus one Surf does it. It'd be pretty annoying if we had to go for two Hydro Pumps. Uh, I will say for this fight, there is genuinely a chance that we could die on this fight too, even with backup Pokemon, because I don't have any revives. Um, and even if we do, we would run out of setup items. So yeah, Phoebe and Glacia are definitely two of the scariest fights in this route. Do, do, do. We really don't want hail here. Okay, light screen. Now just use crunch. Nice. That's awesome. It's really, really good. So, we used to do a strat that did 3x attacks and then had a range to one shot the wall rain to avoid body slam. However,. Not great because it's a range. And hail is very, very, very slow. So you want to avoid that at basically all costs. So that's why we only do plus two X attacks. You need plus two just to kill all the things in the first place, but it takes away one of the chances to get hail. And we didn't get hail, which is a huge time save. I got hail on my any percent PB, or on my record, which. Loses probably like 30 seconds, if not more. And then now, instead of one-shotting, we just waterfall to weaken it. Unfortunate. I hope it doesn't happen again. We could be in trouble. Okay, if it happens three times, we're kind of screwed. That would be very unlikely. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> that's a reset. Okay, we have to restart. We do not have enough. Yeah, we don't have heals. That's brutal, because that fight was going so well, too. 
No, dude. Three body slam pairs in a row. That's like a 3% chance. Yeah, I could have bought more healing items to be extra safe. Um, but I wanted to take the risk just to show off how the fight can look. Okay. Hail turn one is bad. Man, we had the perfect fight. We had such a good fight. And then we got triple paired. I should have bought three paralyzed heals at the start of the game, but played it risky. And I threw away my full heals. I should have thrown away something else, but I didn't really have anything else to throw away. Yeah, that's just very unlucky. Honestly, the play might have been to just try to avoid full paralysis. Just use Sludge Bomb, Sludge Bomb through the paralysis, save one of the par paralyzed heals, or afterwards. That probably would have been optimal. But also, then you can get full paralyzed, and then you're also in trouble. So, oh my gosh, dude. This is kind of crazy. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Four paras in a row. That's a brutal time loss. We lost like two minutes there. Oops. Yeah, there might be a section where we could do that in and in. This is where Ice Beam is super, super good. Goodbye, Hydro Pump. Hydro Pump did great. Body Slam did not. The old route didn't have as many stacks of mail at this point, so that kind of changed things. So, in any percent, this fight is actually kind of bad. Luckily, Shellgon doesn't do much damage, and as I mentioned earlier, we have Clear Body, which means that Rock Tomb does not drop our speed. Saves a lot of time, because we can just set up on the Shellgon, but you need, like, plus three attack to Oko the Salamence, the Sludge Bomb. Sludge Bomb is physical in this game, there's no phys physical special split. Um, and then you also need a X special to Oko the Ligons. But with Ice Beam, it's totally free. You just mash. Ice Beam is just such a detour. You either have to get it from the game corner, which you can actually do pretty easily with glitches because you can duplicate nuggets and then sell them for money. 
and then buy a bunch of coins. But the process of buying coins is actually very slow. So it would take like two minutes, which is not worth it. Skarm is not a threat at full HP. Can't even Toxic, because we're a poison type. And at plus two, Surf kills everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Just do it one extra time. X Special Surf is just so good for Champ. It's just too strong. Um, Tenta saves quite a bit of time compared to Kyogre for the Elite Four. Um, Rain is quite a bit slower than you would expect. Like, it loses a lot of time, but in Glitchless, you know, you're not going to be using it because Swamp Root's even worse, but. Um, rain is definitely pretty slow. There is a risky strat you can do if you keep Ice Beam. You can... Er, not Ice Beam. Hydro Pump. You can Hydro Pump both the... Cradley and the Metagross. And only do plus one. Very risky, though. If you miss on Cradley, you can get Confused Ray, and if you miss on Metagross, I think you can get Earthquake. Not recommended. And now we're the champ. We did it. Halfway done. Oh yeah, we can, we can soft reset already. And nice any percent. Yeah, I guess we could get items from that PC, maybe. Not sure how that would routing would work, but that might be good. Yep, we finally get to see our dad at home for once, and then he leaves immediately. Uh, we made sure to talk to the TV that enables Latias. And then any fishing encounter would be useful here, but we're going to uh, fish like this until we get uh, Whalmer and Sharpedo. We need both of those, and then we'll manip Horsey if we don't find one. Wow, that was a very high level Whalmer. <laughs>
We still have decent odds. We have 55% for something useful here. There we go. That's a pretty standard Route 134. And then watch out, because right after this horsey manip, we're going to do a pretty cool glitch. Because you might be wondering, how the heck are we going to unlock the Reggie Cave? How are we going to go to Sealed Chamber? Because we're on the other side of the currents, so don't we got to do that whole puzzle? All that good stuff? We didn't even go to Pacific Log yet. Where's our... We can't even fly there. How the heck are we going to do that? Oops. I messed that up. Messed up the inputs. Yo, Prince Pecky. Thank you. That was one frame early, I think. Oh my god, I'm doing the... <laughs> I'm not doing sweet scent. Oh, my brain. There's too much going on. I'm trying to think about what's going on after this. This is for a horsey. No, that is one frame early. Unfortunate. Yeah, there's like a lot of stuff I'm keeping track of. I'm also trying to plan when we're gonna dupe more candies because I want to show off the glitch. Not the candy glitch, the other glitch. I think I have a plan for when I'll do it. Come on, man. What the heck is that? I don't even know what I hit. That's very weird. Very unlucky. Let's give it another try. No. That might not work. Oh, it did. Okay. The fish are not cooperating today. What? Is that still one frame early? It could be two frames late, actually. Let's try going early. Yeah, it could be two frames late, or it could also be one frame early. It's kind of the difficult part is figuring out, are you early or late? Come on. I don't know what that is. Man, okay, that must be early. I'm pretty positive that's early. Do you do the manip so often that you can just use your muscle memory in the beginning of the run? Uh, for some manips, yeah. This one is still kind of difficult, though. Kind of have to pay attention. Come on, man. I don't. Uh, this is frustrating. Okay, I have a backup if I need to. Okay, 
what are you? 34. Okay. okay. Well, now I know where we are. That's so weird that we were so late, though. Very annoying. But now we should be good. Yeah, we we're like four frames late for no reason. Sometimes the offsets just kind of troll you. It's just the way it goes. With so many manips, it's hard to make it completely consistent. That's one frame late again. One rumor I've heard is that Flow Timer, which is the metronome program, gets less consistent if you have a lot of uh, entries in a file, which might be true. I don't actually know. But that could be part of it. There we go. Okay. Jesus. We got the low level one, which kind of sucks. But we'll take it. All right. Now, how are we going to get past? These darn currents. Uh, I should do it this way, actually. Uh, no, that's not true. Yeah, I'll do this. Da -da -da -da. Going to do this. Ta da! Was this a random dive tile? And now we're underwater. Do, do, do. Ah. Oops. Oops. Oh, and I need to put, uh, what's his name? Relicanth first, Waylord last. Yep. <laughs> Sounded as if a door opened somewhere far away. Very mysterious. What could it mean? We're going to do another quick candy break. Not using any this time, just making some, so it'll take five minutes or so. And then we'll continue. So the reason why that works, again, that's a taking advantage of tile corruption or QMM. We spawn a tile, so you can spawn tiles that actually have their proper behavior, so like dive tiles will let you dive as you saw there, or like grass tiles will actually give you encounters. We'll see an example of that later. But the reason why it didn't just like put us in the middle of the wall or something, like on other routes, like Route 128, you dive down and the place where you go depends on where you actually dove from, right? That's not the case for every map in the game. So for this section, Route 134, this is the same route as the one that 
the dive area is normally on. Like, it's the actual dive area. Um, and the game doesn't check, like, oh, what position are you in? It just says, if you dive in this route, we take you to this underwater location. It'll always be that sealed chamber underwater place. So regardless of the position, as long as there's a dive tile, it'll take you there. So we just spawn a dive tile, and it takes us right where we need to go. And after this uh, candy session, there's really only maybe one or two more times where we're actually like duping a lot of stuff. So we're almost done with this stuff. After this section, we'll kind of get a lot of patches all in a row. Kind of just going to be running around catching as much stuff as we can. Uh, Puchiana, Zigzagoon, stuff on the earlier routes, and they're pretty easy because you just catch them like with nest balls. That'll get our catch count up pretty quick. Oh, I also forgot to mark Horsey. Should be at 48. Almost done. Three quarters of the way done with this session. This rare candy basically has like a quantum superposition, you could say. It just exists in many places at once. It continuously exists on this tentacruel, but then also in many places in our bag. It's basically the same rare candy, just used many times.
Oops. Okay. There we go. Now I go to Oldale. Gucciana instantly is good. Level 4 is awesome. It's maximum level. We will be sticking this in the daycare uh, soon, but having a higher level still helps. It's actually pretty lucky. Pooch is not super common here. Oops. There's our Zig. We'll catch that. And the nice thing is, even if we're not getting encounters, it's good to go back and forth. Because that's still giving XP to our Pokemon in the daycare. So here we want a few things. Wurmple's one of them. Oh, uh, I think I was supposed to net all this, but it, I believe it's still guaranteed. Yeah, you can use either one. They both work. We still have about a 40% chance for something useful here. Very nice. Shroomish is a good catch. Female Shroomish is unlucky, but it's fine. We'd prefer it to be male for breeding stuff later, but it's not that big of a deal. We know we have male cast form, so that'll be our breeding mon predominantly. Now we're going to do some manips for some of the rarer stuff. Silcoon being one of them. What is alternative for breeding? Uh, oh, like which Pokemon you use to breed? Um, there's a few options. Uh, cast form breeds with everything that you need to breed with. Um, and then Shroomish also works. So that was Silphcoon. Let's get Cascoon. And then we leave. Oops. Messed that up. We should still have time. Yo, thank you, Zunima. Perfect. Awesome. First try on both is very good. Let's 
brown. We need Ninkata and Skitty here. I'll actually just minif these now. Skitty. Skitty is a little harder because it's like a 2% encounter. So it's less likely to find a cluster of sweet scent frames. But it's still a two frame window, which isn't horrible, but not free. Awesome. First try on basically the past four minutes is pretty good. Oh my god, I'm bonking everywhere. Super repels, okay. Yeah, I need to get more repels after this. Need a repel to wear out. Please don't put the Skitty and Wailord in the daycare. Female Jigglypuff in order to breed it. I still have a like 55% chance for something useful here. There it is. We're not gonna minip Swallow now. I'm just gonna catch this. Candy to Swallow. And then we're going to Minip Jigglypuff. This one is similar to Pikachu, where you need it to be female. And it's also a two-frame window. Very nice. Very, very good. Alright, we had a rough start. We had a rough her first half of the run with Manips, but now we're doing pretty good. Hopefully that continues. Alright, leave. Get 
the Moonstone. Very important. Yeah, I kind of wanted to have more repels here, but uh, I didn't buy as many as I thought I'd be able to, because I um, skipped one of the nuggets that would give me a lot of money. But that's okay. This section isn't too long, and we need a Lunatone anyways, so it's not too bad. Oh my god. So, yeah, we need to search for a Lunatone regardless. Unfortunately, these gold bats are probably going to show up a lot. Of course, the gold bats never go away. Oops. There we go. And that is 60. One third of the way done. Very nice. You cannot get Soul Rock in Sapphire, unfortunately. Right, so this trainer is required. Yeah, you can only get Soul Rock in Ruby. This trainer is only required in Catch 'em All because you have to fight him to get bag on. So we're like 10 minutes behind world record right now. But the my old record use an older route and so we have a lot more like evolutions at this point that take a lot longer. So like we already did uh, Sveal, we already did Snorunt. Oh uh, yeah, we do a glitch to catch uh, one line of Pokemon that you otherwise couldn't get. Um, so there is some of that, but currently there's not any glitches that allow you to like catch all the version exclusives. Um, but maybe in the future that'll be discovered. This Manip's Bagon, but also specifically a level 35 Bagon. That's the highest it can be. And that way it's way less candies for Salamence. Awesome. Very good. Yep, we can dig out. We already got our Lunatone. Did I mark? Yeah, I marked Lunatone. Just gonna go to Full Arbor. Instead of buying... Um... Max repels, we're just gonna buy super repels. It's a little bit of a spoiler. I don't want to give it entirely away. Um, yeah, that's fine. But I will say, as a little hint, it's a Pokemon you could normally only get um, by trading with another game. So it's actually not a version exclusive. There's our Lotad, very nice. Okay. 
I'm gonna skip Lombre Manip. Just because we already got a... A Swallow. Or not a Swallow, a low tab That will do the job. Only needs one extra candy. Oh, I got too many float tokens. There we go. Why doesn't step count matter for these manips, but it does for other sapphire manips? That's because of sweet scent. So sweet scent, you just press the button and then it happens, so you don't take any steps during the manips. That's one from late. Yeah, that's why Sweet Scent is convenient. Oh my gosh. Now we're a frame early. <laughs> yeah, the streak. We had so many first tries until now. So Viper is a two frame window, so it's kind of difficult. Come on. One frame late again. But it'll be towards the end of the run that we get our special mon, our glitched mon. There we go. So, let's say in like a couple hours we'll get it. Okay, third try is not the end of the world. We need a Spinda and a Skarmory here. Instant Skarmory would have been awesome, but, I mean, that'd be pretty unlikely. We love our Spinda. First try. Alright, this is a brutal one. This is a one frame window for Skarmory. Uh, that was probably off, but maybe not. We love Spinda because you can play Doom on it. Yeah, that was one frame late. Okay. Pretty close. I kind of messed up my menuing. I might be late again. I'm not sure. Yeah. One frame late. Come on. Uh, that might have been two frames late. We're close. I'll adjust my offset. Come on. Yeah, we just keep hitting one frame late, so I'll move my timer by a frame. No. Fifteen female spinda. Uh, 
Oh, that was two frames early, actually. Okay. Come on, dude. I'm late. <laughs> we're all we're hitting all the surrounding frames except for the one we actually need. Yeah, this is a tough one. Sometimes you get it first try, sometimes you get it tenth try. That's one frame early. <laughs> so we're right there. Gotta hit the frame. Come on. One frame late. Getting kind of unlucky here. That is... Probably late again. Ugh, Skarm. Skarm, Skarm, Skarm. Come on. I don't know how I'm hitting that now. I don't get the frame thing. So, video games run on frames. Every time that there's a new image shown on the screen, that's called a frame. And there we go, okay. I guess I just needed to talk to chat, help distract me, make me less nervous. So, every frame is basically an image on the screen, and different games run at different frame rates. There's our bird. So this game runs at 60 frames per second, so every second there are 60 different images being shown on the screen. And we're going to do another little glitch here that saves some time. And see, we no longer have to go up the cable car. In order to get to the grass here. So, yeah, we would need to hit one specific frame. Um, at 60 frames per second. And, yeah, it's very difficult. What was that, level 21? Yeah. And we have a program that helps us. It's basically a metronome. And so it has, you know, it's playing a beep every certain amount of time. And so we can make it to where we try to press A on that, exactly on that timer. And that can help, but that doesn't make it guaranteed or anything. But it does help. So this is actually one of the few sections where Sapphire is better than Ruby. Shop. In Ruby, these Pokemon are level 18 to 20, but in Sapphire, they're 20 to 22. I don't know why, but they are. Shoot, that is what I don't know what I hit here. Let's try again. New 
small y. Okay, that's either one frame early or one frame late. So we're close. Is there a glitchless catcher mall? Yes, but nobody's done it. Oops, I didn't mean to press that. It's dumb. If I don't get this here, I might just search for it manually. Yeah, that would be a very long run. Okay, I'm okay. I'm just gonna search for this manually. It's a 25%, so it's not great, but it's not too bad. I don't feel like fixing my minute right now in the middle of a run. Yeah, the there is an emerald glitchless catch em all, and that's I believe over twenty hours. Okay, well, I should have just done this from the beginning. And then we're going to take another quick break. We're almost done with our candies. So see you all in about six minutes or so. Let's so make the rest of these. After this, we'll be going to Fiery Path. I think we're on okay pace right now, but that, yeah, the Skarmory was a rough one. The Machop was a rough one. But I would say we're still on pace for sub-7. So I, I talked about this a little earlier, but uh, this glitch is pretty easy to to pull off in a casual playthrough as well. All you need is mail, um, 
Pokemon with Thief or Covet, and a double battle. That's pretty much it. Is the Rare Candy Trick considered a glitch or a manip? Um, this would be considered a glitch. I You could... Like, maybe argue that it's more of like an exploit, but it's... It's doing weird stuff to memory, so... I would say it's probably considered a glitch. Generally, like, yeah, anytime we're causing a memory value to be something it's not supposed to be, it's usually a glitch. Yeah, no, it definitely is a lot more simple than you would expect, and like it, it doesn't look very crazy. Um, so it's kind of surprising that this wasn't ever like noticed on the English version until just last year. But I haven't seen like any. I've 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 browsed the internet pretty deeply for like other reports of yeah like glitch stuff because I'm always curious like is there other stuff that people found that we're just not aware of um, but yeah I never really found any people talking about this on the English version. One benefit of this new route is we do a, a lot of the big evolutions earlier so that we don't have to do them all at the end. One of the annoying parts of the older routes were kind of the very end of the run. Where you're literally just like sitting there and evolving things for like an hour and a half or like two hours because you just haven't evolved anything. Um, this route is a lot more balanced, you know, you're maybe only going to have like 45 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes of evolutions at the end, um, which is a lot better. Okay, here we go. Uh, forgot where I was going for a second. Slugma's a good find. That's a 10% right off the bat. It's pretty huge. A lot of the Pokemon in Fiery Path take a long time to evolve. They're annoying. Yo, thank you for the raid, Goddess Maria. I still need Torkoal, Coughing, and Grimer. Have you tried what happens if you dupe a candy but don't have the bag space for it? Uh, it it just does what you would expect. It just tells you that you don't have bag space. You can't remove the item.
Okay, we got two 10% slugmas before anything else useful. A nice number of catches. Let's go. Okay, the game doesn't want me to catch anything else. Oh, never mind. Nice. Goodbye, 69 catches. I do a quick couple minutes. One for coughing. This one's tough. Hold on. Yeah, it's two frame window. This is for a 2% encounter, so. It's pretty hard to find, usually. Uh, what are you? Going for coughing, Torkoal. It's probably two frames late. Could be two frames early. There we go. Second try is totally fine. And then finally, we need a grinder right here. No. What are you? Probably two frames late again. Uh, yes. These, all these encounters are two frames late for some reason. Not sure why. Yeah, have had a lot of two frame lates today. Sometimes it's just flow timer. Feels like it changes on you. Come on. What the heck is that? Same thing. Let's try it early. Bro. What? Okay, something is wrong here. I don't know why. I think I'm just going to search for this manually like we did with Machop. It's not really worth spending all the time to adjust. The tricky part about hold like buffering the soft reset inputs is that then it becomes harder to time your low timer button. Because you want to pre you want to press them at the same time. There's our grammar. Okay. Should have just done that from the beginning. If the minute worked, then we would have been good. Most of them have been working, but some of them just aren't today. on everything. <laughs> I'm talking on literally everything. Uh, 
this one is yeah. Oh. Our first Reggie. It's very fun that we get to travel to all the different Reggie caves. All right, we need pretty much everything here. Trap inch is good. We still need Sand Shrew, Cacne, and Bolt Ball. Bolt. There we go. So we got a 30% chance for things here, but I'm actually going to try to manip this now. Because the annoying part about this area is Trap Inch, which can have Arena Trap. So I would like to avoid those encounters, if at all possible. Yeah, Arena Trap Inch. Nice. First try, ball toy. That's very good. Seventy-six. We're rapidly approaching the halfway mark. Really? It's one frame late. Hackney is supposed to be pretty easy. There it is. Should have been first try, but oh well. Another tricky one framer here. We didn't have to do this originally because we used Ilumise as our main sweet scent mon, so we had a different minute for it. Now we gotta hit the one frame. The good thing is that Volbeat is also around this frame, and Volbeat is another thing that we need. Nice! First try frame perfect. Let's go.
That's awesome. I should have actually searched in the wild first, but I'll take it. I'm not complaining. That's a very, very good start to this route. Now we just need Volbeat and Roselia. Not you. Oops. Okay. We have a 48% chance for something useful here. Would have been 49 if we didn't win a Yulu already. Nice, that's awesome. That means we don't have to minute Volbeat. We just search for Roselia and believe find it. Da -da 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 -da. It's thirty percent for uh, Roselia. It's the same odds as this Zigzagoon, which we've seen a bajillion times already. Do not want Meryl. Well, I do want Meryl, but not from the grass, from the water. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Where are you, Roselia? Wow. Very, very unlucky here. We had the we did not have a skill issue this time, but we are having a luck issue. They are nowhere to be found. Another Volbeat before we find a Roselia is kind of crazy. <laughs> this is nuts. At least we're getting some extra experience on our stuff. Okay, there we go. Ugh, that was rough. We're always at the mercy of RNG. We need a Meryl. We need a female Meryl that's high level. Perfect. Very, very good. This is so that we can evolve it into Azumarill quickly and then breed it for Azurill. And then finally, we need a Corfish. Ideally, at least level 29. So it evolves at 30. So anything lower than that, and we have to use extra candies. Perfect. Uh, and this is with netball. Close. Okay. Uh, I need to remove things first. Oh, I 
need... What's his name? Pikachu. Or Pikachu. Oh, not deposit. Where is my Pika? There you are. Just got a nice little Orin Berry. Oh, we actually did not dupe the Moonstone yet. Uh, okay, I'll do that after this, but I need to remember to do so. There's a Raichu. I believe it was this one is our Ralts. <laughs> it's actually good to give them different nicknames. Yeah, okay. This... And then, actually, don't do this yet. No, no, no. Yeah, the netball spray is kind of weird. Uh, do this. Yeah, that's fine. And then we do this. This is our second moonstone. I just want to have it now because we're going to use it soon. And then, yes, I would like to raise Raichu. Luckily, you can keep them in the daycare with mail. And now, this is the important part. One. Two. Three. So shout out, huge shout outs to Twisty for this. One, two, three, four, uh, five. So I didn't actually know that you could feasibly manip egg RNG. I thought that the step counts were the same as the friendship step counts, but they're actually separate and it starts when you put a Pokemon in the daycare. So it's actually pretty reliable to manip this. I messed it up there, but. Okay, I think I'm early, probably. No, I could actually be late. It's a three frame window. Yeah, I'm probably late. Let's try this. Oops. But you need exactly 254 steps, which is why I went back and forth like that. Okay, come on, where are you? That's fine. No, I save right before the last step. Okay, there we go. There we go. Usually it's pretty easy, but it's probably just off. And then we're going to do a quick little evolution. They... They do, and so you have to be in the same position every time if you want it to be consistent. Um, but as long as you're in that position, it should be the same. There should be the same amount of NPCs that are loaded in. But if you do a different setup in a different location, then yeah, you need to adjust based on how many NPCs there are.
You can see we went from level 4 to level 19 on our Ralts, which is pretty huge. It saves 15 levels. And that's gonna be about the same for Slack Off, too. A bunch of room here. We're going to need. Well, we're gonna want to make room first, and then we want Jigglypuff. Slack off is in the daycare, we need room for Raichu, and then Shroomish is female unfortunately, so that won't work, but we can use Cast Form. And then I actually need to remove your mail as well. Oh, my mailbox is full, okay. Kind of a messy menu here. It's kind of my first time doing this in a full run. I did a little bit of practice for it, but we take back our slack off. This is now level 20. We'll take back our right shoe. Moonstone for Jigglypuff. Okay, and then going to put in cast form and wiggly tough okay we're gonna do the same setup do one bunk two bunks sometimes this NPC control us. Three bonks. One, two, three, four, five. So being ultra careful not to take too many extra steps. Awesome. First try. Okay, cool. Yep, we were just a little late at first. Yeah, so you can always get the egg guaranteed. The importance of that is insane because you need... Okay, I'm going to evolve you while I talk about this. That egg manip saves so much time. Because if you have two Pokemon that are the same egg group, but they are the same trainer ID and the and different species, they actually only have a 20% chance of having an egg every 255 steps. So you can get really unlucky and just never get an egg. And the only way to really improve those odds is to catch two of the same species. So if you breed like a female and a male Pikachu, it goes up to 50%, but that's still not great. Um, so this makes it way, way better.
And there's our Mon following in our dad's footsteps. Da, 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 da. Not gonna learn swagger. Are you proud of me now, Dad? I have your Pokemon. So we're gonna need Meryl, which is here. We're also going to need Shroomish, which is here, as well as Puchiana. And then what else we're going to need? Do we have room for Wigglytuff and Castro? No. So we're going to deposit these. It'd be nice if we could have these eggs, but really it's not too many steps that we're losing. And then we need to evolve our marrow. Just one candy. And then we need to make sure to put on the sea incense. It'd be very bad if we ended up with a normal Meryl egg that we spent all this time hatching. And then we had to do another one. Sea incense. We will take back Wigglytuff. Won't take back the other one. Put in the Zoomerel. One bunk. No, get out of the way. <laughs> Two bunks. Three bonks. One, two, three, four, five. Four hours in game time. Very nice. Okay. Second and third egg, first try. Not bad. What do we need to do? We can take back... Yeah, we can do it this way. Take back cast form. Uh, oh, I don't have room. Yeah, that's what I thought. We're gonna raise Pooch. Azu. It's really the lowest level mons that benefit the most from being in the daycare. That's why we did things like uh, Ralts, Shroomish, Slackoth, Puchiana. They gain quite a lot of levels, so it's definitely worth it. We need all three eggs. And then we need our Tropius back, along with our Swampert. There we go. Alright, so that was our breeding section. We're done with that now. Um, that used to be a lot longer. So yeah, shoutouts to Twisty again for helping with that egg manip.
And now we need to run a lot, because these eggs need to hatch. Electric is good. Now, unlike in Emerald, um, Flame Body and abilities like that do not actually work in Ruby and Sapphire. So there's no real way to speed up the egg hatching. We So we kind of had to put in a lot of work into how that was routed. Generally, it'll work out pretty well to where uh, by the time we need the party space, they are about to hatch. Um, but sometimes we need to run around for a little bit longer, but generally it's pretty good. Open is actually guaranteed in a nest ball, even though it's kind of high level. Um, it can, yes. Oops, sorry, I messed up the tracker for a second there. Okay, we need Plusle. I gotta look at my file. Plusle, plusle, where are you? There you are. It's hard to manage all these timers. Yep, so we need plusle and mine in now. Nice. It's mining. Mining is pretty rare in Sapphire. Plus, it's the rare one otherwise. Beautiful. Very, very good. That's a two frame window. So, first try is very nice. Now we actually go to New Mauville. However, we did not get the key. But that's actually okay. Don't really need the key. I'm going to repel. I used up all my small repels, so we'll just super. Should have done it a little earlier, but it's okay because it'll give us extra steps anyways for our eggs. Yeah, it's a little too late. There we go. Props to playing female trainer. Playing as the girl is actually slightly faster in this game. Our Voltorb, our baby Billy. And then we need a Magnemite. They're both 50 50. Uh, we want Magnemite to be high level. It can be 22 to 26. The higher, the better. Unlucky. Back in the day, we I uh, used to get the key and then open it, open the, the gate. Okay, 24 is fine. It's pretty average. 
I used to open the key, or get the key and open the gate to actually go inside New Mauville. Yeah, this is RSC's power plant. And the reason I did that is because inside you can actually encounter a a magneton, so you can avoid all that evolution and stuff. However, it's a pretty rare encounter, so it's like a one frame window. Uh, so it's not really worth it. Probably should have repelled there, but oh well. We want a Manectric here, but I'd also take a Linoon. Awesome. Yeah, we are over... Actually... Yeah, we're over halfway done with catches, just in terms of numbers. Uh, I actually think I'm... I know why some of the minutes were not working earlier. Yeah, I bet that's why. Um, yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. The budget for it. Nice. Second try is not bad. It's also a two frame window. All right, and then this is like one of the most important berries in any Pokemon game. That's what we're about to get. So bad at that movement. Persim, yeah. <laughs> no, it's the palm tree berry. Very important. Okay, we don't actually need to search there anymore. We already got our Linoon. We need tile B, I'm pretty sure, based on our trainer ID. Yeah, we had this one before. Yeah, the palm tree berry. Oh my gosh, I looked away. I looked at my notes up for a second and I missed the bite. God dang it. Oh no. But assuming everything is correct, we have a decent chance of... Not that. I mean, that's good too, but <laughs> that's not what I 
Oh, nett. But we have a very high chance of uh, Feebas here. Should be this exact tile. I have done this tile in practice, so. But yeah, you can also get Carvana, which is fine because we needed it. Yeah, perfect. Awesome, awesome. Just like that. Easy Feebas. Who complains about finding Feebas? It's so easy. Kappa. Leafstone, important. <laughs> the RNG. for the nature. The interesting thing about the palm tree berries, they're so powerful at making beauty that even if it's a nature that like doesn't like the berries, it's actually still fine. It's pretty interesting. Is my repel active? I think it wore off. Yeah. There we go. 99. Wait, what did I not mark? Oh, line in. Okay, and then this manip is interesting. This is a bit of a spoiler. Oh, I did still have repel. I could have sworn I used it already. But this this will be a bit of a spoiler for what our secret extra glitched Pokemon is. This will be a hint. Uh, maybe? No, okay. That's not what I wanted, but I'll actually take that, because otherwise we would have manipulated it later. That is not the hint. <laughs> uh... But it's still good. This is one of the manips that step count can affect, because we're actually moving. And we kind of just have to hope that it doesn't. 100 catches. Let's go. Congrats. Uh, I don't think that's it. No. Try one more time. Yo, Joanna. That may be it. Or it's the Absol again. There we go. Perfect. Oh, it's cropped. I'll fix it. Sorry. <laughs> one second. Uh... Ah, I'm breaking things. Hold on. Sorry. Okay, there we go. <laughs> We're good. But wait, what's this? We ran away? What the heck? Why are we not catching the Latias? That's the hint. I couldn't figure out how to open the scene without actually switching. <laughs> Sorry. So we found the Latias, but we're not catching it. Oh, first try. Let's go.
is a one frame window for search kit. <laughs> I didn't actually, I totally forgot about that. I didn't think I cropped it that much. Two out of three Reggies. Actually, repel here. I should have done that earlier. Actually works pretty well. So now we need a few things. Meditite's not bad. But we still need Shuppet and Vulpix. So I'm gonna search until I get Shuppet. And if we get Vulpix along the way, then great. If not, then we'll do a minute. Okay, dude. <laughs> Getting trolled. Nice. Oops. And I'll actually catch Shuppet at the summit this time because there's more useful things we could get up there. like Duskull, and also one of the best mons ever, Chimeco. Duskull. Where is it? There it is. Chineco. Chineco. Perfect. Good level two. There's a few different levels you can get from this mana. 30, I believe, is the highest, so that saves time. 
I think it's 26, 28, or 30. So that's very good. Oops. Let's not save. Might have been off. Yeah, Chang Cho. This is a two frame window, so it's kind of hard. Yeah, that was one frame late. That makes sense. Nice. The Manips are doing pretty good now. We warmed up. I love Chimeco's cry. our gym badges. All right, and then this is interesting. There's another running map. That might have been first try. That'd be awesome. Nice. So this is for Zubat in a Luxury Ball specifically. Luxury Ball boosts happiness or friendship. I always, I don't know which one is actually the official word, but that is very, very helpful. And we also want a Makahita here. Yeah, <laughs> the Zubat gets luxury. None of our other mons really do. And we need a Makuhita here before we leave this floor. There we go. What a bro. Oops. There's a few things we'd take on the way. Aaron is one of them. Very nice. And then we'd also take a Sableye, although it's pretty easy to get Sableye later. I'm not gonna repel here though, because we need it to not be active for another minute coming up. Uh, actually, it's probably worth it now. Yeah, I'll just let it wear out. Because the odds of me getting Sableye are not great. Let this wear out. Blah, blah, blah. There we go. And that steps for our eggs, at least.
All right, and then this is a very important Rock Smash Manip. This is the only place in the game you can get this Pokemon. Nice. First try on both rocks today. That's very good. Yep, Nose Pass is only available in this floor of Granite Cave from Rock Smash. It's the only way you can get it. And it, even if you get an encounter from Rock Smash, which is only like 10%, then it's only a 30% chance to even be a nose pass. It's pretty brutal. If we, if we were to do a manipulous run of this, that would definitely be a rough one. All right, and coming up is Regice. This is not the same puzzle as Emerald, for all you Emerald fans. This is a different puzzle that requires me to literally just wait for two minutes and do literally nothing. So I will be right back. I really have to pee, and I'll see you all in two minutes. Oh yeah, the timer probably shouldn't pause here. Um, I guess it's you could technically consider it a break. I'm not really sure what the rules would say about that. Um, but technically we are <laughs> playing the game. Mudkip is playing. Ah, oh, that's okay, Tahis. Normally, we just let it play during this. There we go. We did it. All three Reggies. Alright. Stuff is going to get pretty wild from here on out. So... Keep your eyes peeled. However, I need to hatch my eggs. They should be hatching very, very soon. Oh, 
There we go. There's our Pichu. And then it should just be another couple hundred steps for the next one. They should be fairly close together. So we got them at a, around the same time. There we go. All. Azuril, good. One more. Actually, we could have gone after that. We didn't really need to stay to hatch that one. We have enough room in our party, but oh well. Figured it was about to hatch anyways. Okay, now we go here. Oh my gosh, forgot about you. You are going to be swapped for... Does it really matter? No. Uh, actually, I don't want you at all. Wait, no, I, yeah, I did this kind of backwards, actually. Should do this. This goes in here. You go back. Yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. Okay. So we got our Zubat. We're gonna give it the Soothe Bell. Get our Beldum. Oops, wrong thing. All right, I almost forgot about the coolest part. There's going to be a lot of wild stuff happening here. You may have seen this before, maybe not. But now we're off. <laughs> These swimmers are very scary. I'm gonna try my best not to hit any. There's one up here that's always a troll. Uh, yeah, this is fine. <laughs> True. All right, we go right here. And then you might be thinking, man, I really wish I could find Mirage Island, but it's just so rare. Well. Oops. You're in luck. We can spawn our own miniature one. Look at that. <laughs> Ta-da! All 
Our own one tile wide Mirage Island. Terraforming. And then. But we're not done yet. Watch this. This mysterious hole. Oh! Here's conveniently Sky Pillar. And <laughs> yeah, we're already there. Oh my god. Okay. Dang it, I forgot that room. For a second. I thought I was gonna do perfect. Ah. Oh my gosh, that's not fair. The rappel didn't give me full speed. Okay. Who says Sapphire Runners can't do Sky Pillar? me, I guess. <laughs> Why not spawn our own Mirage Island? It's true. So, yeah, that glitch is pretty cool. Um, whole tiles have very interesting properties when you spawn them in places they're not supposed to be. They would actually let us skip, like, significant portions of the game, but they're just so inaccessible. Uh, it's very hard to find them, which is really annoying. We can't just spawn, like, any tile in existence. We're somewhat limited in what we can do. But that happens to be one of the routes where it is available. Okay, this is unlucky. We have a 45% chance for something good here. Nice. But yeah, for that Reg Ice puzzle, you literally just have to stand at that door for two minutes. You, there's nothing else you can do during that time. So it's, it's such a perfect opportunity for a bathroom break <laughs> for the run. Because at about the five hour mark or whatever, I really gotta go. So it works out. Alright, then we need Altaria. As well as Bennett. It's quite all good. It's good to find. It's good. It's uh, good in terms of stats and stuff too, I think. This is okay. Awesome. First try Altaria. I think it's pretty good in competitive singles as well. Nice. 120. We got 60 more to go. We are about eight minutes behind world record. I don't know if it's beatable, but we have done a lot of the big evolutions already that my old record had to do a lot of later. So it'll be close, I think. Yeah, it does have levit levitate. Might have been late on this. That's probably one frame late. Yeah, so we want Zubat or Golbat specifically in a Luxury Ball to boost happiness. Okay, good. And so we want a specific Manip to do that. Because it's not guaranteed to get in a Luxury Ball unless you weaken it a lot, and that can be slow. So we delay it for a certain position. 
It would be nice to get it earlier, actually, and we might change the route to kind of reorder that. Because it would also be nice to boost friendship. And here's side Rayquaza. Yeah, Crobat is a friendship evolution. It's the only one in this run. Bum, 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 bum. All right, another pretty crazy glitch here. This is honestly like the holy grail for catch em all. We are swapping bikes, if that's any indication. This glitch is pretty cool. Sadly, it's post-game only, but it is pretty crazy what you can do with it. There we go. So this is a secret base PC in the overworld. And if we pack up, here we are. <laughs> but that's not all. This is a real battle, not a safari battle. So we can throw actual Pokeballs. Not just Safari Balls. So we are in the Safari. We can do anything in here. Uh, we won't run out of steps. There's no step count that we have to worry about or anything like that. And we can use as many Pokeballs as we want. We can actually like fight things. And the most important part is Normally you can not save and quit inside of the Safari Zone, but now we can, and that is huge because that's what allows us to do RNG manipulation. So normally all of these encounters you just had to hope that you could find, and it was a major pain, and then even if you found them they could run away because you had to use Safari Balls. And there's a whole Pokeblock meta that we used to make sure that they didn't run away, or at least reduce the chances. But now we just get everything like normal items, or like normal Pokemon. There's a Rhyhorn. Yeah, Mail is very, very broken. It's kind of crazy how much silly stuff he can do. And then we still need Gloom. We still have a fifth. Uh, actually, no, that's a 25%, so we should probably Manip now. We're gonna do Gloom. I actually want two Glooms. See, we can actually save and quit. Such a great time save. Nice.
We're actually getting two glooms, one for Vile Plume, one for Blossom. Perfect. And two more important things here. Dodrio and Pinsir. Pinsir is the big one. It's a 5%. Awesome. Okay, these Manips are going really well. Should be fine on Master Balls. We really only need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more. Yeah. So we had a few extras just in case. It kind of depends on how the run goes for how many you need. But we won't have too many extra, so it worked out pretty well. Oh my god, I opened the Pokédex on accident. This minip is pretty fast, so you gotta kind of be good at your menuing. Yeah, this one's tricky, because it's one frame window. That is one frame late, so pretty close. I actually should have done pincer minip first. Because if you're one frame early on Pinsir, you'll actually get a Dodrio. So that was a slight misplay. That might be Dodrio. Nice! Awesome. Second try is great for a one frame. And the reason we switched to Acrobike is because we need to go to the Acrobike section of the Safari Zone. There are things there that uh, we have to get. Unfortunately, there's no way to glitch into this, the Acrobike section yet. Then we also want a Psyduck. The pace is looking not too bad, honestly. I think that this is definitely sub-7 pace. We're trying to get a gold duck with this. Unlucky. That is... What is that? Is that two frames early? I'm gonna check real quick. That is... No. One frame late, actually. And once we finish up Safari Zone, we have our final surprise glitched Mon as the last catch. But we got to do some stuff first. We got to make some Poke Blocks, so I'm going to enjoy that.
This is for Goldeen. Sea King would be good too. But if not, then we just evolve Goldeen. It's Waluigi. That is not a great level. You want it to be at least level 32, so that's, you know, a few extra candies, but I'm okay with that. It's technically not a gl glitched mon, it's just the way that we obtain it is glitched. There is... If I'm underestimate, maybe I can show an actual glitched mon that does exist. Got our Goldeen. What do we need here? We need not to Wobbuffet or Giraffe Rig. So 40% for something good. Awesome. Level 29 is also useful. You'll see why later. It's pretty quick to set up. It takes maybe a few minutes to set up the glitched mon. Still need... Giraffe Rig. I'm just gonna minip this now and then we'll get Natu later. We already got Doduo. Pikachu, what? Who are you? One frame late. Pika. No. Who the heck are you? I need a giraffe. That was two frames early, I think. There we go. Third tries the charm. Natu, Zatu, Fampi, and Heracross. Whip, whip. Which is pretty likely to find something useful. That's very good. Still got a 40% chance for something good here. Nice. And now we just need Zatu and Heracross.
Oh, that's one frame late. Yeah, we're just like barely late on a lot of minutes today. Yo, Huangli, so am I. A whole frame. A whole frame late. Thanks for the good luck. I might have been early, actually. No. Same thing. You're here at a good time, though. We're gonna finish up Safari Zone soon, hopefully, and then we get to make some fun pokey blocks. Let's go. Come on, Zatu. Why? You're not supposed to be here. Try a little earlier. No! Who are you? Who is this Bampy? Oh, I could actually be early. You think? Yeah, I could be early. I didn't realize that, actually. I'll try this again. Show me something besides Fampy so I can actually tell. Nice, okay. Yeah, I think I was moving actually too early. I over-adjusted. Alright, one big one left. It's the hair cross. This is the last one frame nip of the run. We have just under an hour to go if we want to beat record. Nice! First try on the last frame perfect. Let's go. You'd love to see it. That's hype. Okay, so we had... We'll have four extra Master Balls after this. Which is good for backup. Let's go. Uh, where are we going? There. And then, where is it? There you are. One. Why is the goat? The goat! Alright, we got our four palm tree berries. And then we're gonna do one final stack. We'll have to do probably a little bit more at the end, but this will be the last full stack of candies. Uh, the last one will probably be like a half stack, so not as much. So, be back in five minutes or so. And then we're gonna make our pokey blocks, so. When you come back, make sure not to miss that. That's something you, like, never do <laughs> in any speedrun. So why would you?
Yeah, Kant is master, true, actually. Fourteen plus twelve. Twenty three plus one. Trying to do some quick maths while I'm doing this to figure out exactly how many candies I'm going to need. I have a spreadsheet that helps, but I want to double check. Almost done. Three quarters done with the stack. And then we're zooming. Okay, we need 304, if my math is correct.
I tried to make a safe estimate, just in case. I want to double check how many I actually have. So I have 99, 198, 297. That can't be right. I must have missed something. We should not already have enough. Maybe I did miscount, actually. Well, we might be good. It's Pokeblock time. Let's go. Okay. Well, we might be good. Okay. Might have totally overestimated the amount that we need. If anyone in the chat has played Drill Dozer before, you might recognize a lot of the sounds and assets from that game. It was one of my favorite games as a kid. Did we really go way over on candies? That would be surprising. I feel like maybe I missed one. I'm not sure. Oof. Doing good does actually make a slight difference. Uh, it increases the RPMs, and that actually determines how fast the game ends. Ah, nice. One more. Oh, a gold one. Let's go. I guess that's technically faster. When it prints the name. I'm gonna feel kind of dumb if we make like 30 extra candies. Or indigo, I guess. Okay, that's all the ones we need. And now... The moment of truth. Why the heck are we going to the battle tower? Mankey? <laughs> Oops. Is it a bad idea to mash in the beginning of Pokeblock cycle? I don't know, actually. I don't know what it does. Yep, surprise! We're catching a Mankey in Sapphire. No, not actually. It is... It evolves into a fighting type, if that's any hint. So, it's similar to Mankey in that way. A 
And then we're gonna evolve our Beldum. Before we do anything else. Just so that we don't have to come back to withdraw it from the PC again. It's not really worth it. Hmm. It's not a version exclusive. It evolves into a fighting type. This is all obtainable Pokemon. Yeah. So 180 will be our final total. Which, there's more Pokemon in the decks than that, but you can't get things like Seedot. Or Solrock, things that are version exclusive. It is not Ralts. We have Ralts already, actually. Sidosh, yeah. We cannot catch Sidosh in this game. Few more candies on our Metang. Very cool pseudo legendary. Five more. How did I get so many rare candies? This is a major glitch in the game involving mail that lets you ex essentially exchange a piece of mail for any held item. So you equip your uh, Pokemon with a rare candy, you try to give it a mail. If you've activated the glitch properly, you'll receive a rare candy, but it won't actually remove the rare candy from the Pokemon. And so you can just keep on doing that. You can do that with all sorts of things. You can do that with Master Balls, to remove the mail. Anything that your Pokemon can hold, you can make a duplicate of. It's very useful for this category. Okay, we need... Billy making a return from several hours ago. And then we need Geodude. Ball toy. Where is my ball toy? There you are. And then Wabafet. There you are. Oh, I forgot to remove Swampert's mail too. Dang it. <laughs> One thing I forgot to do. Uh, I'm actually not sure. That's a good question. I don't know if anyone... There was not an official leaderboard before the mail glitch. So I'm not sure if other people have done it, but... 
That's a good question. Prince Pecky might be onto something. Maybe. This manip is kind of tricky. Needs good execution here. I forgot to mark Metagross. Yeah, so for comparison, like, Emerald has done a glitchless catch em all and it took, like, 20-some hours, I think, like, 22 hours, something like that. No, shoot, that is... what did I hit? One frame late. Okay. Move a little early in our stuff. Yeah, we're being, like, barely late on all of our minips today. Very annoying. The annoying part about this minip is if you do it, which makes you resave. Very annoying to miss. There you go. It's one frame late on the first part, which is a four frame window, and then I need to hit the second four frame window. Yeah, we got DQ'd. Sad. And we want to see a Zatu lead. We need the right NPC. Yes. And then we need to see Zatu. Yes. Okay. Second try is not bad. I'll take it. Oh, that does not kill me, actually. <laughs> The reason we have these mons is because they all know self-destruct or explosion. <laughs> so we we actually want to lose this fight as fast as possible. And this train these trainers have random AI, so sometimes they just won't hurt you for a long time. Okay, and now it's actually trying to make me stop from blowing up. Okay, good. So we bring three self-destruct mons, and it's pretty nice because we catch three mons already throughout the run. Yeah, it's basically die percent. Oh, don't hit yourself. Well, do hit yourself, but that way, yeah. Okay, good. That was a crit. That shouldn't matter. Uh, as long as the rest of the mons are alive. Okay, now is the kicker. We cannot save and reset from this position. We have to be very careful not to do that. And we have to be very careful in general about not breaking this glitch. And we want... Wobbuffet in slot one is very important. And now is where things get interesting. Remember we how we found Latios earlier, but ran away from it? We need to find it. Okay, it's on 133, so we go to 117 and check the decks. This is a interesting method here. But we need to find it without saving and quitting, so we can't use a actual RNG manip. We just have to do a full-on hunt. But this method was developed by Shiny Hunters. Okay, we have to actually refresh it, I believe. But yeah, this method was found by Shiny Hunters, as far as I am aware. Uh, I watched Sonics make a video on it. But this is kind of the most efficient method of finding Latias quickly. 
Yeah, we're kind of shiny hunting, yeah. I maybe shouldn't have gone back in the house after that first one, but it's okay. Yeah, that might have been a slight misplay on my part. And that is... oh, that's actually not a good one. Route 119 is not useful. We want Route 111, 117, 110, 133, or 134. All of those would be good. Getting kind of unlucky here. It's kind of called like the chasing method, because once you get it in a good location, you can... Oh, nice. It was just lucky. Didn't really get to show off the chasing, but... You kind of chase it around until, in yeah, in specific ways, uh, to make it favorable for it to show up in the right spot. I also need to remember to repel. Very important. Why are we going in a building? That will. Uh, let's... So entering an actual building completely randomizes the Latias location. Um, just going between routes... There's our Lottie. Just going between routes does not. It has a predict somewhat predictable pattern. There's our Latias. Okay, we lead Wobbuffet because it has Shadow Tag. We swap to our Tenta. It has Ice Beam for this reason. Can't run away because of Shadow Tag. Mist Ball's fine. It can't even drop our stats because we're clear body. We Ice Beam. We have to be able to one-shot this or it will flee. Very important that we one-shot it. Oh, and the battle's over. Or is it? We kill the Shiftry. Do, 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 do. There it is. And even though it looks like a trainer battle, we can catch him. <laughs> Ta da! Prince Pecky got it. It was the fire chicken. Yep. Pretty crazy glitch. That is called the Lottie glitch. Uh, we already did the water stone. Yeah, just go this way. Actually, we should go into daycare. Yeah, that is definitely like one of the weirdest glitches of this gen. You can only do it once, though. That's the big kicker. Is that once you do it once, the Latias is gone forever. Which means that for one, we can't catch the Latias. But also it means we can only get one Pokemon from the Battle Tower. Which Torchic happens to be a cool one, but also the fastest. I like, yeah, I like that it's Torchic because it's a starter and it's cool to get two starters in a single run. There are other options. You can get like a Shiftry, which would, would be a version exclusive, but then you'd have to breed the Shiftry into a C dot. That'd be pretty slow, so it's not really worth it. But the trade-off is you get three Pokemon in total. You get Torchic, Combusk, and Blaziken. As opposed to just Latias. So it's a net benefit of two.
Yes, from now, we're only going to be focusing on evolving, pretty much. We've got... quite a few Mons, but not too many. We have Puchiena and Shroomish, which are still in our daycare, so those shouldn't be too bad. They got a lot of levels. And the nice thing about Torchic, too, is it only takes two candies. As time looking compared to record, we are... Ooh, we are a few catches behind, so it'll be pretty close. My guess is we'll be like two minutes behind at this second to last split, but then we've done a lot of evolutions already that record hasn't done, so it'll be pretty close. Correct, we do not get Latias in this run. In a glitchless run, you would get Latias. We're not just going to be staying here the whole time, so one interesting thing about friendship in these games is... you actually get friendship bonuses if you are in the same location that you originally caught the Pokemon in. So we caught Zubat in Granite Cave. So we're going to go back to Granite Cave and evolve it there. And then Feebas still needs its Pokeblocks, so we're going to feed Feebas the Pokeblocks. And those... Other than that, we'll just be evolving, so sit back and relax, enjoy the cool Pokemon. Yeah, so we, the goal, or the category is to catch as many Pokemon as you possibly can. So, I have heard of a glitch that allowed you to respawn Latias by beating the Elite Four again. Although, the details of that are fuzzy. I've heard it's generally due to old cartridges more than anything. So, I don't believe it can actually be replicated on, like, every uh, copy of the game. But if people find a counterexample of that, I would be very excited to hear about that. Danny Gulpin. Magnemite. Sir Skip. Feebass. Yeah, I saw a Reddit post somewhat recently about that idea, um, but I didn't find anyone else that had corroborated it on their own console. Um, okay, now is probably a good time for my little announcement. Um, I've been putting in a lot of time to glitch hunting in this game over the past year or so, and I am kind of out of ideas, so I'm going to open up two major glitch hunting bounties, um, one for trainer skip, so any required trainer in the game if you find a way to skip that one of those trainers and increasing the catch em all catch count. So if you can increase it to 181 or higher, each of those will be a $500 bounty each. So if anyone wants to try to find something, you could win 500 bucks for a trainer skip and 500 bucks for an extra 
Pokédex entry. So, I'll post the details of those later today. But I figured it'd be fun to put some incentives, put some money on it. Just in case other people want to try their luck. And then I'll also do a $500 bounty for Glitchless World Record, just to even the playing field, give something to the, the Glitchless fans, because, you know, I'm still a Glitchless runner at heart. So $1,500 bounty total, two Glitch Hunting bounties, one Glitchless bounty, $500 each. I'll post those in the... Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I'll post those in the Gen 1 through 3 Discord at some point later today with the details and the rules and all that. So, stay tuned for that if you're interested. Oh, sorry, when I say glitchless, I mean any percent glitchless. I should have been more clear on that. So whoever, yeah, whoever gets the any percent glitchless world record, I'll also put up a five hundred dollar bounty for that. That way we've got kind of one of each. So we got a glitchless bounty, or yeah, an any percent glitchless bounty, an any percent glitched bounty, and a catch 'em all bounty. I will plan to have these expire at the end of 2025, so you'll have a little over a year. And obviously for the, the glitch hunting stuff, uh, I've done a lot of work with that, so if anyone is interested and they have questions or they want to learn more or they have an idea but they, they need help or anything, feel free to reach out to me on Discord. Yes, first to complete. Yep. Yeah, so whoever finds it first will get it. Or whoever beats the record first will get it. In the case of Glitchless. Oh, I forgot to split. Chat is not allowed. True. Uh, Firestone. Okay, so we're like six minutes behind record. I don't know if we're gonna make it. I think we still got a lot of big evolutions. So I don't think this is a world record pace. But it's pretty close. It's probably 650 pace. I guess. And then, oh yeah. Yay, Poke Blocks. Oh, he hates them. That's time loss. <laughs> Why would they have to use the word disdainfully? Takes so long. But even though he hates them or she hates them, it's still enough. Still good enough. He hates it. I believe that was all of them. Oh, I have to deposit. Yeah. And 
then what else do we need? We need dust skull. Silcoon, Cascoon, and Kata, and Skitty, and then I'll deposit Nine Tails. That way we have room for Shedinja. So, yeah, obviously if you don't feel like watching the evolutions, don't feel obligated to stick around or anything, but wanted to announce the bounties before too many people dipped out, and if you want to stick around and enjoy, we'll just chat. Otherwise, I hope you all enjoyed. It's a pretty cool category. I definitely think sub-6 is possible. I don't know if I'll grind for it, maybe someday, but I would definitely love to get sub-6 eventually, or just find a new glitch that, you know, gives us more Pokemon. Either one of those would be really cool. Yo, thank you, Coach Alwo. Yes, if Ninkato is shiny, the Shedinja will also be shiny. Both of them will be shiny. Yeah, sub-6 would take very good RNG and also, like, first or second try on almost every uh, RNG manip, probably. I'm pretty happy with Latios, though. That went relatively quickly. I think this maybe would have been record pace if I didn't make so many candies, because I'm pretty sure I have more than I need. Eh, maybe not. It probably wouldn't have been enough to make the difference, but... I can also post the... Yeah, I'll post the route. This is the, the notes, in case people are interested in that. It's pretty interesting how some of the stuff works. And we should be well under estimate, so um, another thing you might stick around for is I'll do the glitch Pokemon encounter. It doesn't actually count as a Pokedex entry, so it's not part of the official run. But to do sort of a true catch em all or a true Pokedex completion, I guess, whatever you want to call it we will do that as well. It's a pretty short setup, it takes a couple minutes. Ninjask learns so many moves on level or on evolution. Silly. Oh yeah. Moonstone. Yeah, we still got um Magcargo, Grimer, Weezing. Flygon. Those are like the biggest ones left. Did we do Vulpix already? I think we did. Yeah, we did. 
forgot to mark that one. We need Talo. We need Baggin. We need Clotad. We need Splink. We need you. And then we need a chop. <laughs> yeah, true, Pecky. You think you gotta evolve a lot. We gotta evolve for 45 minutes. <laughs> Endeavor. My Hero Academia reference. Fog. Yeah, glitchless, you don't evolve anything, basically. Except your turtle. -na 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 -na. One sixty one, nineteen to go. Oof. If we average one every thirty seconds, we can record. But man, yeah, some of those big ones, Crobat. Yeah, Squirtle. Robat, muck, coughing, or wheezing. Those take so long. did do the biggest one already, which is Metagross. To grumping. So close.
we go. That's a big one out of the way. We got Puchiana is a quick one. Ludicolo is a quick one. Breloom's a quick one. Sea King's a quick one. Oh, we did Machamp too. Forgot to mark that. Or Machamp. Well, not Machamp. Machoke. Waterstone. It's our last stone evolution of the run. We got about 10 minutes left to beat record. It'll be close. Oops, okay. I didn't do fly or salamence. I'm stupid. <laughs> ah, I knew I was reading something. That's okay. It's like that went by too fast. Fifty for Salamence. Yeah, Muck is just crazy. Muck evolves at level, or Grime evolves into Muck at level 38. The coughing is 35. Very high levels for no reason. Yeah, we can learn Fly. It's one of the few Pokemon that actually learn an HM from leveling up. Which is kind of interesting. This menu will be the last of, like, the really big ones. Cacne is kind of, but... Yeah, Puchiana will be fast, Goldeen will be fast, Zubat... Well, Zubat is kind of big. But not too big. But coughing and Grimer are definitely some of the worst. As well as Flygon or Trapinch. Wheezing.
Weezing's box spray looks really goofy, actually. Really noticed that until now. Honestly, if people found a way to, if somebody found a way to make candies faster, <laughs> oops, someone found a way to like instantly dupe a bunch of candies or something, I'd probably consider that as a bounty too. I'd, <laughs> I'd probably be willing to pay big money for that. That would be very convenient. Candies are kind of all over the place now. getting our fake pseudo legendary here. I kind of feel like Flygon should have been a pseudo legendary. I am. done. <laughs> Flag on. Let's go. Uh, we have like less than five minutes. I don't think we're going to make it for record. It is really close though. It'll be sub 650 hopefully, which is still very good. I'm pretty happy with that, that you can consistently get a sub 7. Even with as many hiccups as we had in the mid game, there are 180 total. Time ends after the final evolution once it fades to black. Yep. So, I'll give a heads up when it's the last one. So it'd be, yeah, it'd be right there. Yeah, we had a okay early game. I'd say the only really bad thing was the mudkip took a while to hit. It was like fourth or fifth try, I think.
I'm actually going to keep Salamence on me here because it has Fly. That way I don't have to find Tropius again later. Oh, I forgot Slugma. Slugma something. And then we need Zubat. And... Oh, I forgot Goldeen. Wait, did I already do Goldeen? No. Oh, I did! Oh my goodness. Okay. That changes things. Cacne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, this is closer than I thought. And then we'll get both Mons. Yeah, okay. This will be perfect. So our Pooch will now only take two candies to evolve instead of the normal 14 or 15 if you don't put it in the daycare. And then our Shroomish should only take two or three as well. Really, really good time save using the daycare to its fullest extent. Oh, I didn't actually teach Fly. I'm stupid. <laughs> I should have taught it. No. Zuba unfortunately does not learn fly in generation three. It would be kinda nice if it did. Oh my god. Wow, yeah, I had way more candies than I needed. Huh, okay. This is kind of growing pains of the new route, I guess. Just learning something new. But I definitely learned a lot through this run. I think the route can be improved a lot more. I plan to make it a lot easier to keep track of how many candies you actually need for the end, because that's definitely an important thing. Because if we have, you know, 20 candies extra at the end, that lost like two minutes almost. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, so we passed record. Not gonna get it today. Unfortunate, but it is very close. For a marathon run being so close to record, I'm pretty happy with that. On to the final five. There's nothing we can do. Why did they make my cargo like this, dude? <laughs> this is so stupid. Uh, it takes so long. Yay. Four more. Alright, 
The Zubat generally takes about 23 candies. Golbat pretty soon. There it is. And it should be about level 30 that we get Crobats. Yeah, this one's definitely tough. I think one thing that could definitely make a big difference in routing is finding a way to get this earlier, keeping it in your party so that it gets happiness through running ar running around this whole time. Uh, but it's tricky because you do definitely want it to be in the luxury ball. Be here or one more. Nice. Okay. That's what I expected. Two more. The final two. They were sitting in the daycare for three hours. <laughs> so they finally get to grow up. Oh, this is going to be really close for a sub-650, actually. Anemic. Oh, it might be, like, right on the dot. No, why are you learning headbutt? Oh, I forgot this is 23. I thought it was 22. Alright, time is after the Breloom shows up, and then it fades to black. That's when time will be. No, we're not gonna make it. It was so close. Dang. Oh, it's learning Mach Punch? No. <laughs> That's time. Alright. Uh, let me mark the total. Yep, now we gotta restart and do it all over. Let's check. 180. Nice. We did it. Ooh, the end is always a little bit grueling. Time timer was stopped for a little bit. Yeah, I got a 652 on my own splits. So it was about seven minutes behind record, which was not too bad, honestly. Yo, thanks, everybody. I appreciate that. And just for uh, just for clarity or for insurance, let me show you Professor Birch. Does confirm it. We love duping. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Let's go. He called us a professional. And yeah. Yep, I hope you all enjoyed. Um, it's a 
it's a pretty neat category, honestly. Like the fact that you can do all of that in such a short amount of time is pretty crazy to me. And so it's kind of fun just to push this game as far as it can go. It's kind of what I like about it. But I hope you all enjoyed. I hope I showed off some of the cool glitches. There's some really weird broken stuff that you can do. I think it's pretty entertaining. What do you mean you got 180 Pokemon? I just sent you out into the world less than seven hours ago. True. I'm just a beast like that, you know? What can you do? Alright, and then real quick, this will take like two minutes, maybe less. Uh, where should I go for this? I'll go here. Real, real quick, we'll do one final glitch that really doesn't have any use. Oops. Now we'll press B. But it is pretty cool, and it kind of fits with the catch em all theme. We'll teach it to Salamence here. Yo, thanks for all the GGs, everybody. Alright, make our secret base, we leave, like that, and then we're gonna go, let's go here. There's a million places where you can do this, but just go to the fastest one. So this is the the hidden 181st Pokemon. Although we can't catch it, so it doesn't really count. I guess you could say it's like an extra encounter, though. So now, we opened a secret base. We're going to make another one. We go in and see it's our base. Looks pretty normal. But actually, I don't really like the secret base anymore. I'm gonna close it. Sorry. You know... Actually, I changed my mind again. I kinda want that secret base again. Oh, I put it over there on accident. What? Who is this dude? This dude squatted on my secret base while I was gone, and now he thinks it's his. What the heck? Not cool. Have I made a secret base already? Well, yeah, you're inside mine. Oh, you chose this place. Oh, and now he's gonna fight me for it. He's, he's saying, yeah, you want your place back? Come get it. All right. Let's get, let's get our place back, huh? Youngster, that's his name, I guess. And that's his only Pokemon. <laughs> oh, we intimidated him. Okay, good start. Yeah. That's really... All there is to it, but this is a quote-unquote glitched Pokemon. It's it's what happens when you spawn a Pokemon that has no data, or has yeah, it doesn't have real data. And if you open the bag and you close it, it's gone, and so is the health bar and everything, which is pretty weird. Yeah, some people call it call them Deca Marks. Um, it's, it uses the same sprite as those. Um, it's not exactly 
glitched. Like, it doesn't have any glitched moves. It doesn't have any moves, as far as I know. Um, but yeah, it's sort of it's sort of like the missing no of Ruby Sapphire. Currently, there's no way to get a true glitched Pokemon without trading. But it's kind of cool. Yeah, so if I try to throw a ball at it, I'll try. Even a Master Ball. It blocks it. <laughs> and then it just dies. We threw the Pokeball at it and killed it. And we get one XP. Yeah, it is technically a trainer battle, unfortunately. And we get zero dollars. So this dude stole our house and then didn't even give us any money. And we beat him up. It's not your secret base, it's mine. He says, come visit me again tomorrow. So yeah, you can only fight him like once per in-game day. Um, but you, I believe you can repeat this process to do it again. Percent sure, but that's the glitched Pokemon. You can see it doesn't actually show up anywhere in the Pokedex. We still have 180, 188 scene, but it's kind of cool. I hope you all enjoyed that little Easter egg. And yeah, that's it for me. So again, two two major bounties for glitch hunting that I'll post the details of, and then also a big bounty for uh, any percent glitchless world record. I'll post the details of those in the Gen 1 through 3 Discord. Join that if you haven't already. And I hope you all enjoyed. And I'll pass it back off to the tech team. Enjoy the next run.